some time ago, there was a place in the bayou where the people felt the magic. Billy Cannon watches it bounce. He takes it on his own 11. He comes back up field to the 15. Stumbles momentarily. He's at the 20. Running hard at the 25. Gets away from one man to three. This magic was not an illusion, nor was it performed with tricks. This magic was a feeling, an extraordinary power of electricity in the air when the LSU Tigers took the field. But the magic, the feeling, disappeared. This year, there is a new feeling in Baton Rouge. A coach who understands the magic. A freshman back who stayed home with hopes of returning the Tigers to their rightful place. Today, LSU's magical mystery tour heads north to play Mississippi State. From the beloved Golden Triangle in the Magnolia State, Starkville, Mississippi, it's time for the lead SEC Game of the Week. And today, the Fighting Tigers of LSU in their first conference game with Jerry DiNardo as head coach, taking on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. We're live from Scott Field. Hello, everyone. I am Jim Brando. Much like a Louisiana politician, this 42-year-old Brooklyn native came into the Bayou country with positive spin control. After all, he could not mount a winning record at Vanderbilt. And after game one at Kyle Field and College Station, the positive spin continues. After all, short of their special teams, they performed admirably against the third-ranked Aggies. But as I bring in Dave Rowe, I think you would agree, this is a team Curly Holman managed to beat three of the last four years. This is a team they fully expect under Donardo to beat today. Yes, they're supposed to be competitive, and they have got to have a competitive team to win this football ball game today it's a big game for him I think Jackie Sherrill Tim t summed it up best when he said this he said hey it's a big game for us because it's a step in the direction that we want to go but it's also a big step for them because they're trying to get their program started interestingly if these two teams are to achieve their ultimate goal they'll have to have great execution in one specific area <laughs> and it's an area my partner knows a great deal about oh it's the part I love it's up front it's in the trenches and coaches will always tell you that the game is one up front it's one in the trenches and it's getting pressure on the quarterback we expect today smash mouth football up in the trenches and it's going to be a different type of pressure for LSU the pressure is going to come from the outside rushers they're two defensive ends Gilliard and Northern they're both defensive ends they've got excellent speed and quickness they had 12 tackles between them last week but for Mississippi State it's a different type of pressure it's up the gut pressure three big guys inside Sears G and Greer if he plays they average 297 pounds and then you talk Top that with an impact player in Dwayne Carey at middle linebacker. Offensively and on special teams, game breakers. Eric Moles of Mississippi State, Eddie Kennison of LSU, where early in the season, special teams can be the difference. Oh, special teams can be a huge factor in this football game, and everybody knows that speed kills, and both those players have got great speed. It's the longest running series in the Southeastern Conference. The Bulldogs of Mississippi State, the Tigers of LSU, coming right up. Today's Lee Apparel SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Lee Apparel. With new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By Sonic, who invites you to drive in for a change. By CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Scott Field, Starkville, Mississippi. The Fighting Tigers of LSU and Mississippi State. Jackie Sherrill, 11th winningest active coach in college football. 67% of his games have been won in his 17 full seasons as a head coach. And Jerry DiNardo, now coaching in the SEC 
for the first time in the purple and gold. And let's go down to our broadcast partner, Bob Kessling. Bob? A couple of things to watch today, Tim. The quarterbacks, we got two good ones, two veterans in here. Jamie Howard of LSU decided not to play baseball, concentrate on football. Jared Denardo, very happy he's returned today. He could go over 5,000 yards in total passing. And Derek Tate, last week, had four touchdown passes for Mississippi State. You mentioned the coaches. Jackie Sherrill's had a Dickens of a problem trying to beat LSU all time. He's only one in six against LSU in his career. And, of course, another thing to watch on the field, the running backs for LSU. They got a couple of young ones, a redshirt French freshman by the name of Kendall Cleveland and Kevin Falk, a guy that Dave's already talked about, could be a good one. By the way, Cheryl's inability to beat LSU was bulletin board material. Eric Moles at the top of your screen. Robert Isaac, number 36, at the lower portion. And Wade Ritchie, sophomore out of Karen Crow, will kick off. And he has plenty of leg, as exhibited here. It'll be a touchback and a first down for Mississippi State. The Tigers won the toss, elected to defer, so they can receive to open the second half. There you see the series record, LSU and Mississippi State. The Tigers have played the Bulldogs more than any other SEC team, and this is, of course, Mississippi State's centennial season. Derek Tate, an outstanding young quarterback with a new offensive scheme this season. Boy, what an excellent game he had last week. 18 of 26 for almost 300 yards. He had 13 of his first 16 in the win over Memphis here. Split backs behind him. Three-step drive. He lost it for Moles. Touchdown! Did you see Moles turn it on? He looked back, saw that pass, and I mean he kicked it into passing gear. They beat Troy Twilley, and they felt they could exploit him at that corner. Torrey James at the other corner is the best cover guy. His third touchdown receiving. The extra point is good. We've got a marker down. Tim Rogers did convert. And there you see, he just tied career receiving touchdowns with that one. Bill Buckley also had 14. That was an incredible run and pattern by Moles. A violation of the neutral zone. The kick is good. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Now, the watch the trajectory of the pass. It's not a good pass. It's wobbly. Look how high it is. Right there, Moles just kicked it on. And I mean, just burned him. I thought he was running fast when he took off from the line, but he exploded when he saw the ball. We should mention that outstanding track team that LSU has. Twilly is one of them. So this is a speed merchant that Moles beat. Yeah, right there. You see right there, he put his head down. Look at that stretch for the ball. Now he got that separation in the defensive back, and he burned them. It appeared as if Twilly did take a poor angle, didn't it? Good protection up front. Give him time. Look, the big man on big man locked in there, and he stays right back solid in that pocket. But what a play to start this football game. This is not normal Jackie Sherrill football. He remember how he used to love to pound that ball down your throat? Where'd you go, baby? 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 Number one, baby. 15 seconds, man. Okay, you know it. 15 seconds. <laughs> Eric Moles has spent a, a lot of time with Jerry Rice during the offseason working out. Has another touchdown catch. That's the game breaker for the Tigers, Eddie Kennison. Magnificent speed for him, and you'll see him at wide receiver today. Eric Smith is also back there with him as Tim Rogers prepares to kick the senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. So the quick strike from State. And now the Tigers get their turn. Kennison at the 15. Down at the 22. All across the outside linebacker defensively down there on special teams to make the tackle. Or will a play like that get you in, get your crowd in the football game? Jamie Howard, third among all-time LSU quarterbacks, but the interception problem, particularly the Auburn game, is something psychologically he's still trying to shake. He had six in that game, five in the second half, three returned for touchdowns.
movement along the Mississippi State front. That is Falk. Kevin Falk over the left side. No marker down as apparently State did get back in front of the snap. Behind him, Robert Toomer, Kendall Coleman, Shedrick Wilson is the possession receiver, and Trey Champagne getting the start, a converted tackle. They lost Greg LaFleur to an injury last week, and that is a very big loss for the Tigers, particularly up front. And that's a young offensive line, a very young offensive line that Jackie Shira wants to take advantage of. Absolutely. Wants to put a lot of pressure on, on Howard. Wants to get to him fast. Don't let him get deep in that pocket. Sit and look downfield. On second and four, Falk again. He's got outstanding speed, the freshman from Karen Crow, highly celebrated. In fact, Jerry DiNardo would tell you he reminds him of Eric Bieniemy, whom he coached at Colorado. Defensively, Larry Williams, unsung as a pass rusher. Dwayne Curry is the leader, the Butkus Award finalist inside. Ewell getting the start in the secondary at that corner spot. Clay Mack is out with a groin pull, didn't practice all week. First and 10, LSU. Trailing seven nothing, ball at the 42. Double tight ends. Fought. Hammered. Coming up, Walt Harris, the outstanding Jim Thorpe finalist who leads Mississippi State in career interception. Yeah, this is what you want to do on a runner like Falk. You want to bounce him to the outside. Don't allow him to step up. See the big man slide along the line. Now force him outside, and you see Harris come up there and finish him off. You don't want to let someone like Falk sneak through that line because he's into secondary so quickly. Harris had two interceptions last week against Memphis. Kevin Falk. You'll hear a lot from him, as well as Kendall Cleveland today. Out pattern. Falk gets it up to the 47-yard line. Eric Smith and Jimmy Lipscomb collaborate on the tackle. An interesting Howard, as he stood back there, had a lot of time. They didn't put a lot of pressure on him. You know they've got to be talking about that on the sideline on Mississippi State. They have got to get pressure. Howard will eat you up as he stands back there. Third down and six. Kendall Cleveland has come into the game, number 32 for LSU. He'll be the lone setback. Well, you see the numbers on Howard last week. Wilson. Shedrick Wilson, the flanker, gives the Tigers a first down deep in Bulldogs territory. Tim, you notice two things about that play. First of all, lots of time to stand back there. Watch this. Nobody in its face. No pressure. Now watch the outstanding throw straight over Wilson's shoulder. Wilson, as he's coming down, right there, number six. Now watch. Look right straight over top of his shoulder. Just an excellent throw. And I'm surprised at LSU's composure to be hit so fast and gather their composure and start driving the football. Excellent. Much like Jackie Sherrill, the Tigers going after the new corner, Bernard Ewell with Cedric Wilson. Falk, twisting and turning inside the 25 near the 23. Larry Williams, the defensive end, out of Moorhead, Mississippi, made the stop. Tim, you hate to make comparisons, but right away when I look at Falk, I think of Marshall Falk, same type of a runner. Not that big, 5'10", 195, but same results. Second down and seven. Second down and seven. Shedrick Wilson at the bottom of your screen. Chris Hill, the tight end in motion. Play fake. Oh, nice misdirection, and Hill does manage to get the ball down inside the 15 to the 13. Oh, boy, and Jamie Howard. threw that ball almost sidearm. Some of that ability as a baseball pitcher perhaps coming Absolutely. into play. Watch this. There he goes through the line. Sneak through the line. Now, what happens with, with uh, Howard is he's got the big rush. He flips the ball almost underhand or sidehand. First down, 10 Tigers at the 12. Off 
off the left side, only a couple of yards. Pass your ball, carry Kevin Falk met by James Greer, who is in the game. That's Greer suffering from a leg injury. He, along with uh, Raymond G., out of Cleveland, Mississippi, will probably get plenty of time. Greer, 6'6", 307 pounds out of Macon, Georgia. Second down, and eight. Second and eight. Tim, this is the eighth play of this drive. That's a long drive. Falk following Hill. Falk, touchdown. Like it's going to be a defensive struggle. <laughs> Watch Falk. Nobody touches him. A misdirection play. It's that little counter, and then you pick up those big linemen, but nobody even gets close to him. I was impressed with the freshman Fenneca and the job he did in pinning down Corey Sears. Absolutely. Got a big block on him. Andre Lafleur's extra point is good. Former walk-on ties the game at seven, and will return after this message from Car Quest Auto Parts. A nine-play drive for LSU to counter the big touchdown toss early on from Tate to Moles. And again, Richie's kick deep into the end zone, and Isaac brings it in and gets the touchback. Just a brilliant drive, an in-your-face offensive drive oh, for the Tigers. Absolutely. What a way to answer. LSU kept their composure. They stayed with their game plan. They didn't panic. You've got to give a lot of credit to coaches when they do that. They had their players under control, Tim. We saw the coming out party of Robert Edwards of Georgia last week, and Jerry DiNardo may, in fact, give a curtain call to Kevin Falk today. Oh, boy. Just the freshman staying home. First down and 10. Again, the quick three-step drop. And the pass is complete to Chris Jones, the wide receiver. Denard Walker coming up from free safety to make the stop. That quick strike meant we couldn't introduce you to the offensive line that is in front and the backs that are behind Derek Tate. There they are. That offensive line, very strong. Brent Smith, a bit of a question mark, moving over from defense to left tackle. And he has to check Gabe Northern today. Twilly and Walker are in the game, along with Clarence Linton and the LSU secondary. That's Kepper McGee. McGee out of Crawford, Mississippi, stopped by Clarence Linton. And there's that LSU defense, the aforementioned Northern and Gilliard. Desotel, a stabilizing force from tackle to tackle in the middle. And Pat Rogers getting his first start of the season. He was out last week, troubled with the flu. Twilly has already been burned. James, the best cover guy for LSU secondary. Second down and a yard to go. First back through, first down, Mississippi State. Nakia Greer, sophomore out of Hernando, Mississippi, stopped by Gabe Northern. Well, Gabe Northern can go around the block and still make the tackle. He's number 88. Watch this, around the back of the tackle. Now, get back into play. He's got that kind of quickness. At 6'3", about 240 pounds, he is a very important player today. First and 10, Mississippi State. Three wide receivers in. Pass is thrown behind McGee. It'll be second and ten. It'll be very interesting to watch how Jackie Sherrill dodges Gabe Northern today with Brent Smith. And you notice all uh, in the first few pass patterns, he's gone with that quick three-step yeah. drop. Yeah, what they do is they, they adjust their drop to just three steps for the quarterback, and it's pure timing. You've got to be open at three steps when that quarterback gets back there. Corey James showing blitz and now backs off. McGee with a convoy. Run down by Northern, and believe me, Gabe Northern came a long way to drag him down. 
I love that in a back, in a defensive lineman, I should say, when you run down somebody. Northern's at the left of your screen. Now watch this. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Just runs them down. There's Brent Smith. Big block. Clarence Linton also in on that pile. And the numbers for McGee last week against Memphis, they had their way against the Tigers of Memphis a week ago here in Scott Field. On the third and short, McGee should have the first down inside the LSU 45-yard line. They hold about 40,000 here at Scott Field, and they're near capacity today. I am really surprised at the poise that these two teams have. You strike big. LSU answers back with a long drive now. Mississippi State takes the ball and starts in their offensive game plan. Shaston Coleman is coming to the game number seven for the Bulldogs at one wide receiver spot. And there he is. First down, Mississippi State at the Tiger 23. And Derek Tate had to feel the pressure that time. Fake back inside. It's going to be a little play fake action right there. Now come right back. Now he's getting pressure from the right. Just a perfectly thrown ball. Again, look at the protection up front. Nobody getting in there. They're controlling Northern. They're controlling all the big guys. There's the blitzer in the middle. They're just stopping them up front. Yeah, McGee really did pick up Desertel, that middle linebacker. McGee wrapped up. Anthony McFarland, the first to get there. The freshman from Winsboro, measuring 6'1", 302 pounds. They think he's going to be something special. Boy, you talk about you talk about smash mouth football. Watch this blitz right through the line. Boom, peel them off now. Stick them. Don't let them fall forward. You see them all ripping them back? That's effort when you get all those other guys coming in after to not allow them to fall forward. He's tremendous against the run. They'd like him to watch the weights in the offseason. He came in a bit big, but yeah. they say he's got some quick feet. A bit big, 330? Yeah. <laughs> Play fake from Tate. In trouble. Well, that could be a lateral. Yeah. That ball is absolutely live. And will be controlled to Mississippi State way back at the 42-yard line. A dangerous pass that, in fact, turned out to be a lateral. And a loss on the play. Well, when you break a play like this and it's not open, what you have to do is you have to go downfield. And really, if you, want to, if you want to fault somebody, Tate really forced the play. He went back to it twice and lost a lot of yardage. You just have to kind of ad-lib on a play like that when it breaks. Third down and 29 yards coming up for the Bulldogs. Kenny Mixon has come into the game to help with that pass rush. Three wide receivers in for State. Intercepted by Tory James. Down at the 23 as McGee hauls him down. Pass was intended for Chris Jones. And James comes up gippy. Well, the coaches said that James was their best one-on-one -on -one coverage man, and he proved it. This is on on the defensive team. Whoa, what a big penalty. Jimmy Harper heading up our officiating crew on top of it. Now, what they called is someone was in the neutral zone. Someone jumped down in the neutral zone. Watch James, number eight, on the left of your screen. Step right in front. Great eye contact. As we said, best one-on-one. -on -one. You see him limping right there. He's actually limping right there and falls back on that same hip. Well, that's double trouble for the Tigers. Not only do they lose the turnover, but they perhaps lose their best cover guy to a pulled groin or perhaps a hamstring. Jimmy Harper is our referee. The umpire, Mike Wallace. That's the rest of our veteran Southeastern Conference crew. Twilly is back into the game as James checks out. Third and 24. They go at Twilly. Incomplete. He did get help from Clarence Linton. And that is big-time help because Linton was not available last week against Texas A&M. He was uh, serving a suspension. He was out for one game. Boy, this is that tough down area. 
You're not going to pick up a first fourth down on this fourth down, but you don't want to punt it into the end zone. You want to punt it inside the 10, 15 yard line and down it and, and try to hold them on field position. Kinnison standing at his 10. And you don't want to punt it to him either. Andy Russ's punt goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And the Tigers will have it first and 10 from their own 20 after a 77-yard drive the first time around. Back after this word from your local SEC station. Ah, the youthful experience of college football in the SEC. And there's Bill Clay, who's getting older by the minute, trying to contain <laughs> this LSU offense. He wants that push up the middle, and it's difficult to get to Jamie Howard. First and 10 Tigers at the 20. Falk, the lone setback. Quick out pattern, incomplete. Dropped by Eric Smith, the split in. And Tim, you see both of them going to that three-step drop. A lot of push in the middle there. It's going to be, it's going to be a dogfight back and forth, I mean, all day long. There is a comfort zone, isn't there, Dave, for a quarterback like Howard when he's going against a team that he's had some success against, and clearly, in this league, this is the team that he's had the most success against. Oh, absolutely. Against. Yeah, you, you come back into the game and you say, man, I, you always remember what you did last year against them. And he, and he has to be thinking about that. I've had good days against them, and it gives him a little bit of a boost of confidence. Shedrick Wilson is the wide out at the bottom of your screen. Fought. A couple of yards, and that's it. Kevin Falk. Gave Tiger fans a reason to smile when he signed with LSU. The running back was perhaps the top high school recruit in the nation and a star at Karen Crow High outside the Lafayette area in Louisiana. He not only rushed for almost 5,000 yards in his career, he also scored an amazing 62 touchdowns on the ground while throwing for 11 more. No relation to Marshall Falk, but he certainly does remind one of, of Marshall Falk, himself a Louisianian. Absolutely. Third down nine. Howard going deep. Smith dropped it. Oh. That's the second drop. And you know, he earned the, the spot over Eddie Kennison in many minds because he had better hands. You know, that was a, over a 50-yard pass, and it smacked him right in the fingertips. You cannot throw the ball better than Jamie Howard is play, throwing it right now. Punt time for the Tigers, and this has been an adventure for a long, long while. Kessler had some poor snaps from center last week, and you see back deep Bernard Yule. He's standing at the Mississippi State 38, and another low snap. Mississippi State coming after it, but the punt does get a healthy roll. Yule did step out of bounds. That is a break for LSU, and we've got some markers down. Flags along the LSU sideline. Now, I think that's a helmet sitting back there, isn't it? Way back on about the 15-yard line. Does that look like a helmet? <laughs> well, if the helmet was taken off on the field of play, that's that's 15 yards. Jimmy Harper will tell us about it. During the run back, we have a block in the back by the receiving team. The 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First and 10. Well, that hat was knocked off then, wasn't it? Jamie Howard putting on an air attack early. We'll be back. Derek Tate, who is uh, averaging 51 yards per completion today, he's <laughs> two out of four in the air, taking a, a brief rest. And Adam Russell, freshman out of Dora, Alabama, in for him. They did the same thing last week on the third series against Memphis. Play fake, in trouble. Oh, he it, got this one set up. Good rotation from LSU's perimeter. Tony Buckhalter, the fullback, bringing it in. Picks up healthy yardage for Mississippi State. And there's Russell, young man that they're very high on. Can you imagine what it was like for the freshman to turn around on that fake play? And there was one of those big linemen. Now you see the hand guard there? What that does is they have the play, the hit chart on there. They take a lot of pressure off those freshmen. Signal in like play number seven. He looks down the card, calls play number seven, and doesn't have to make those tough decisions. High formation for Mississippi State. Isaac in the backfield. And Isaac is still in the backfield. Stansberry, the linebacker, 
Number 43 for LSU, the junior out of Baton Rouge. I heard that up here without the microphones. That was a great hit. Watch number 43 step up in there. Just bam, that's big time football play. Wow, that is a big one. Now watch right here. You can't shy away from this, you just gotta accept it. But that's a definitely a deep leader where you can see both the bottoms of his shoes. Michael Brown is in the game at wide out along with Lahiti Grant. Another hit that counts. Chuck Wiley does the honor this time. Number 55, the sophomore from Baton Rouge. And Mr. Isaac <laughs> yeah, two is, in a uh, row. is uh, feeling the pinch of this Tiger defense that moved from worst to first in the league a season ago. Well, you have to be impressed with big time hits. You see Wiley in there. When he hits them, he wraps them up. He's got those big arms around him. That's what coaches teach you. Don't just give the impact, but wrap them up. Keep those arms around. Bring them down. Kennison is back deep. Andy Russ's punt is high but short. And a marker down. Could have roughing the kicker against LSU. He's thrown back in that area, Tim. It, it, could be, it may be holding yeah, against Mississippi hold. State. That's the preliminary indication we're getting. And it was thrown way, way back behind the kicker. For those of you just tuning in, 2.44 remaining. Jackie Sherrill's club strikes on the first play from scrimmage. A touchdown pass from Tate to Eric Moles. Then the Tigers of Jerry DiNardo return the favor. A 77-yard drive culminating with a touchdown. After the snap, we have holding in the offensive back. The penalty is declined. First down. So they do decline the penalty to get the field position. Let's look on the left-hand side. See, we see the holding right there. See the holding and pull down on the left of your screen? That's the call. And a good call by Jerry DiNardo not to take a re-kick because he has excellent field position. Garrett Kagan's number 48, guilty. A defensive end in a reserve capacity for Mississippi State. That touchdown by Falk measured 11 yards to tie this game. Jamie Howard, three of five, and the two that he's missed have been drops. He should be perfect. Double tight end. Play fake. They're going deep again. Kennison. Touchdown. attract me because Kennison was just flying downfield. I'll tell you this, Jamie Howard cannot be any more accurate than he is right now. The one, as you said, he dropped, had the two drops. The one hit him right in the hands, hit Smith right in the hands. He'd be perfect right now. Tabor holds, LaFleur's kick is good. And LSU leads it 14-7. As advertised, Moles and Kennison. Oh, boy. Speed kills. Watch this. No pressure. Watch this. Perfect ball. I mean, the trajectory on that ball and the spin on it is perfect. And look at the separation. You see, McGill is just, McGill is just kind of just trailing after him. And look at Jamie Howard. As you said, you know, you come back to a place, you know you've had success there. That young man's got to be walking about six inches off the ground right now. At least one reception in the last 22 games. And really the problem for Curly Holman last year at LSU was that he couldn't find enough ways to get Eddie Kennison the ball. Now with Jamie, with his confidence at a very high level, Eddie Kennison's likely to get the ball more often. Well, and you have to compliment a coach for that because I'm sure Jerry DiNardo took him in and said, listen, we need to calm you down. Forget about last year. He had some tremendous pressure on him last year. Isaac and Moles are back deep. Wade Ritchie will kick off. Ritchie gets it about two yards deep. Isaac will be forced to keep it in the end zone. Three consecutive touchbacks offered up by Ritchie. It's time now for our Morgan Keegan around the SEC. The South's premier investment firm. Morgan Keegan brings it to you. Our games today, when you talk about Georgia and Tennessee, that game will be seen later tonight. 
and you've got a couple of outstanding rushers to watch in that game, not to mention Peyton Manning, who some believe is not only the best quarterback in the SEC, maybe a future top-round draft pick. And you see the scoring play for the Tigers. Very quick to Kinnison. Derek Tate back into the game at quarterback for Mississippi State. Quick slant, look-in pattern. Complete to Jones. Twilly is there to make the stop. And let's go down to Bob Kessling. Yeah, Tim, we're checking on Derek Tate. Of course, he last year was bothered by an ankle injury all the time, all season long. Now this year he's got a hamstring problem. Didn't bother him much this week in practice, but he got treatment before the game. They've got it heavily wrapped, and we'll keep an eye on that hamstring all day long today. You know, Bruce Arians, the offensive coordinator, felt that uh, his misses in the second half against Memphis were because his hamstring began to bother him, and the fatigue factor uh, had him airmailing passes in the fourth quarter. McGee, keeper McGee, stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Well, there was some talk that the field was pretty wet before the game, and that'll even compound that hamstring because when it's soggy, you put a lot more pressure on the hamstrings. Gabe Northern made the tackle for LSU. Misdirection, look at Northern. Boom, he just stuffs the big lineman there. The big That's Brian Wright, 61, pulling. Northern's quite a football player. So you say that the field was uh, maybe a little wet? Yeah, well, it was a heavy rain here about, <laughs> what, about a week ago. <laughs> Northern moving around. I set. Blitz coming. Play fake. Moles incomplete. In and out of the hands of Shaston Coleman, the senior out of Ackerman, Mississippi. You remember that old adage, don't take your eye off the football and run before you catch it? This is exactly what happened on this play. You see the blitz? They stuff the blitz. They give him a lot of time, and Coleman just misses the football. It's just where he takes his eyes off it just for a second. One of the things Derek Tate has really done well since the offseason coming into this particular year is watch films and develop the ability to check into the right play. Third and 13. Pretty good smack there by Denard Walker, who they're now able to use at a corner and a safety, but the marker is down. A late one, but the infraction did occur, it appears. Well, I wondered what, I didn't see the flag come down right now, defensive away. Defensive interference, yeah. defensive interference, automatic first down. Walker five. thought that he had timed that just perfect on the curl pattern. You watch him in your screen, number 24, he's gonna be in the left of your screen as the ball's delivered. Watch the impact from him. Just a little bit behind, but you see him running again. Tate, a little bit of reaction from him. Oh, man, I just missed that one. But all of a sudden, he looks to the right and sees that flag and says, all right. Chris Jones was the intended receiver. First down, Mississippi State. It's a reverse to Shaston Coleman. And Pat Rogers, that weak side linebacker, snuffed it out. Rogers is a young man, a junior out of Fair Park High School in Shreveport. Well, who was destined to play that position, but he had the flu, and Aaron Adams was in there against A&M last week. Well, you see big Gabe Northern. One of the things you have to like about him, doesn't get knocked off his feet and never gives up. You talk about the excellent uh, movement there by Rogers. That's his responsibility on that weak side. You can't take off too quickly. 111 remaining in the first period. Action-packed in Starkville. Three wideouts. Quick out, complete to Michael Brown. Brown stops two, perhaps three yards shy of the first down by Talvi Crawford, the strong safety, senior from Orlando. You know, Tim, one of the things that's had a tremendous effect on this game is the weather. It's a perfect day. I mean, we've been out here when it's been 110 and the humidity's higher. This is a great day for football, and these teams had tremendously warm springs and, you know, fall ball, so they've really had a tough time in the fall. You know, LSU, Jerry DiNardo had about 11 or 12 guys that needed a great deal of help to get through those two-a-days. He was very concerned. This has got to be a walk in the park for these young fellas, the kind of weather we have today. Look in, incomplete. Nice coverage from Crawford again. Pass intended for Michael Brown, and we've got a marker down again. Oh, if that's going to be the defense in the neutral zone, Jerry DiNardo is going to have a heart attack. Look at him. Of the neutral zone, defensive team, 
five yards for the first down. Big play. It was third down. They don't make it. Look at DiNardo. You've got, when you line up on his defensive lineman, you have got to look in at that football. Penalty yardage assessed against the Tigers again. The interesting thing, we'll see how bad that penalty affects them. It's a simple five-yard penalty, but it keeps the drive alive. High formation with McGee and Greer in the backfield. It's McGee, deeper McGee. And a nice shoestring tackle made by Troy Twilley, a sophomore out of Slidell who was burned earlier on the touchdown toss to Eric Moles. This is a good play by Twilley. Boy, great cut here on the ball to come back against that football. Find a hole. Keep your eyes open. Right back to the right is the hole. He gets in there. Now Twilley's one-on-one. -on -one. He can't let him get outside because all his help is back inside. And he turns him back inside to his help. That's the kind of tackle Twilley could not make against Texas A&M last week. And it uh, meant an extra touchdown for Texas A&M. Clock showing 25.7 seconds remaining in the opening period. Tim Brando, Dave Rowe, Bob Kessling. Happy to have you with us. Second down five. He's checking off. A big check off on the line. I uh, saw it coming, but couldn't do anything with it and he did slip on that field if in fact the moisture is there there to make sure that he got no further kenny mixon a young man the tiger defensive coaches are very high on carl reese happy to have him back in the lineup we played one in starkville jackie sherrill's club down seven to lsu The setting, the backdrop, the chapel. The chapel bells, Mississippi State, Southeastern Conference football's lead. SEC game of the week underway. We open the second quarter. Tim Brando, along with Dave Rowe and Bob Kessler. Third down, 12. Moles near a first down. Right in front of Denard Walker, the free safety. It appears that he may be in position for that first down if he gets a positive mark. Let's take a look at our Lee first quarter stats. Passing yards could even be greater were it not for a couple of drop passes. Can't get any more even than that. Fourth down and less than a yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike the Tiger has been gagged for the moment. Derek Tate maturing under Jackie Show sees something he does not like and calls a timeout. Just underway here in the second period. From Starkville, Mississippi State, hosting LSU. Next week, our Lee SEC Game of the Week, Tuscaloosa and Bear Bryant's protege, Danny Ford, brings in his Razorbacks. They have a key game against South Carolina this week prior to taking on Alabama. And speaking of uh, Bear Bryant protégés, how about Jackie Sherrill, who now on fourth down in less than a yard looks for a first down. And gets the first down, courtesy Kiefer McGee. And who do you go behind? The big guys. Brian Wright, 300 pounds. Henry McCann, 327. That's just power football. It's like you line up and you say, hey, we're coming right in here, so get ready, big boys. That's just good drive block off the line. Everybody just, that's tough football. He sounded a little like Frank Broyles, the old redhead, with a power <laughs> football call. Power there. football. Oh, power football. First down at 10. away from McFarland, but he helped Chuck Wiley get that tackle. Well, I, I may sound like Frank Royals, but you really sound like Frank Royals. <laughs> You're incredible. I thought I was a big SEC fan, but you may be the biggest SEC fan. Well, I did grow up with it, that's for sure. Florida State with the early lead over Clemson in the ACC as our Jefferson Pilot Sports scoreline serves up some. Nebraska up by three over Michigan State. Ooh, Texas Tech, Spike Dykes' club 
on the road in a very big way, hanging in early. McGee on the quick pitch. Markers down as McGee goes down in the arms of Chuck Wiley and number 82, Pat Rogers. Kenny Mixon also in on that pile. And that's an interesting series of first two plays. They go back to the run. During the run, holding offensive line of scrimmage, 15, 10 yards from the spot of foul. 10 yards. Holding. And Tim, the reason I say it's an interesting series is because they've had such success moving the football via the pass. We were talking earlier about the field perhaps having some moisture. Bob Kessling is down there. What about it, Bob? Well, of course, they've had a lot of dry weather around here, so they've had to pour a lot of water on this field. They did so yesterday and today a little bit. You can see on the edges, it's very, very wet and mushy. Out of the field, it's damp, but really this field plays better when it's damp. It's one of the best fields in the SEC. We can also tell you that uh, for LSU, they got an injury problem. Torrey James, the defensive back, has a slightly pulled hamstring out of the game right now. On second and 25, takes pass, falls incomplete, intended for Moles. Well, I remember when I played with the Raiders, we always used that field moisture to a big advantage. We'd always let the field grow up real tall because we were all big, slow linemen. And they'd wash you, wet it down, and everybody'd say, Man, you must have had rain all week long. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really been moist out here. There you see Torrey James on the sidelines. And uh, although the impact of his loss to this he juncture has not been play. felt, it could be. Oh, that's a huge loss because they were really counting on him. It's one of their best one-on-one -on -one men, especially against Moulds. Incomplete. And Clarence Linton almost had the pick off the tip drill. Chris Jones again, the intended receiver. You have got to catch a football like this when it's thrown across the middle. That's, that's just an easy catch. I know it's tough going in the middle. Watch right here. You're going to see from the right of your screen, you're going to see number 17, Jones, come in. Again, that's just that's a ball that has to be caught. You've got to come down with that one. And we've seen them on both sides. Eric Smith has two key drops, one that could have gone perhaps for a touchdown, and now Jones with two. Andy Russ has punt, a boomer, but into the end zone. He's been unable to find that Coffin corner today for Jackie Sherrill, and he caught a little bit of uh, his ear when he went to the sidelines last time. 12-20 remaining in the second. LSU by seven. He's the sixth coach in the last 16 years at LSU, Jerry DiNardo. The revolving door for LSU football began when Charlie McClendon was let go in 1979 after 17 seasons. Jamie Howard with the hand to Cleveland. Kendall Cleveland, the redshirt freshman out of Orange, Texas, who did have two touchdowns, one in the air and one on the ground last week. And there you see, since 1980, the tragic loss of Bo Ryan, who had come over from NC State while on a recruiting trip. And then Stovall, Arnsbarger, Archer. And both Arnsbarger and Archer had some success. But recruiting became a problem for the young head coach, Archer. Curly Hallman came in. And the truth is, DiNardo did not inherit a cupboard bear. Curly Hallman did do the job in bringing in some skilled athletes. Second down nine. doing on the ground for LSU this time fought hammered by Terry Day I love the story Tim about uh, Jerry DiNardo going to practice when he was in high school he went to the same high school that Vince Lombardi went to and he used to catch a subway to practice in a subway home you know the truth is many people have said Brooklyn to Baton Rouge don't get it well I tell you if you go into parts of New Orleans it would remind you of Brooklyn and he does wear well in the southern reaches of the state Falk has 31 yards on eight carries 14-7 Tigers Smith is in the game Howard incomplete Cleveland the intended receiver Covered by Larry Campbell, the right outside linebacker. 
Boy, listen to this team rise up because they know their defense has just kind of turned the game around a little bit. Stop them deep. They're going to get excellent field position, and they're going to get ready to come down for another drive. So the crowd responds to that defensive right. effort. That's the first time we've seen them dictate tempo to LSU's offense. Kessler to punt it away from inside his own 10. Just did get that one away. You got to give him some room, and here comes the marker. You have to give room when that fair catch is called and the Tigers didn't do it. Well, you know, so it'll be better field position, and it was already going to be pretty good at the 47-yard line. Yeah. Anytime you, your man fair catches, you got to get away from him. It's foolish to come up that close because if he fumbles the ball, you want to be able to react. Here's we the had ball. a violation of the two-yard zone. No contact. Five-yard penalty from spot where he caught the ball. Eric Smith is guilty as uh, Bernard Ewell was trying to bring it in. So you have to give two yards away. See how close he was in there? He tried to get away, but when he fair catches it, he's not going to run. So what you do is you back off, hoping he maybe dro drops the football or fumbles it. One of the most well-organized coaches of the modern era, Jackie Sherrill, with his offense in good shape in Tigers territory. Linton's hat, oh, along with Robert Desitel, inside the 35-yard line of LSU. And I think Linton got hurt on that play. Watch this, down the line, make him take the fake. Now watch him when he puts his head down. McGee just puts his head down. Watch he and Linton, number 18. Bam! You see Linton just kind of jog away. He never wrapped him up. Uh, you can pinch a nerve that way. Oh boy, can you ever. First down, Mississippi State. McGee, oh, nice move by Keeper McGee. Down to the Tigers, 28. Troy Twilley and Alan Stansberry collaborate. Well, we knew this was going to be contact football. It's going to be smash mouth, and that's what it is because these are big-time hits. These defensive backs are having to come up there, and I mean, they're giving away 20, 30 pounds and just giving everything they have on those tackles. 9.45 remaining in the half. McGee. Keeper McGee may have a first down. Calvi Crawford made the tackle. Well, when those big offensive linemen come around there and they seal it off, it's a misdirection play so that you allow your big linemen there. You see 52 McCann. You allow them to get out in front. See, they just kind of seal it off. Now you just burst out there. 61 is Brian Wright. He's 300 pounds, and he's out there leading that running back. Kiefer McGee had 82 touchdowns in high school. In the state of Mississippi, that ranks him third all time. to hit the deck back at the 34-yard line. Oh, is he going to get an earful from Jackie Sherrill? You don't do that. You're back 15 yards. The play is a broken play. You've got to throw the ball away. Just throw it downfield. Again, it's a broken play. It's going to be a screen out to the right side. See the way he drops back? Now, the screen's not there. Now, just throw the ball away. Ad lib, but don't take a 12 to 15-yard loss especially right in front of your coach. And look at Daniels on the play. He's coming wide open. You've got to look downfield. You've got to add lib on those plays. Second and 21. Out of the shotgun. Ten. Incomplete. He had his man... Michael Brown, but the pass a bit overthrown. Boy, and you see how much that compound's taken that loss. It was first down on the 22-yard line. It's now going to be third on about the 34-35 yard line. You're almost out of field goal range. Tate's numbers, 6 of 11. He, too, has uh, had the misfortune of some drop passes from his wide receivers. 
I know who I'd go to. <laughs> the numero uno yeah. wearing uno. Third and 21, and Moles is flanked to the top of your screen. Goes to him. At the 17 yard line. Boy, I'll tell you, Moles makes such sharp cuts. He gets great separation from the secondary, and when he makes that cut, the secondary guy is still dropping off, and he's, he has a separation of about five to seven yards. I mean, I'd look to him all the time. They can't cover him right now. Look there. See the separation? Just perfect. Great concentration. Looks the football in. He's fearless over the middle. Tim Rogers now will attempt a 34-yard field goal. This has been a problem spot for Mississippi State. In fact, Jackie Sherrill is now contemplating not redshirting one of his freshmen, Jeff Walker, because both in special teams, lacking depth on kickoffs, and the inability to come up with a field goal can be a major problem when you're playing in the most difficult SEC. We'll be back. The oldest building on campus, Lee Hall, named after the founder, Stephen Lee, the brother of General Robert E. Lee, an historic spot in Starkville in the centennial year. David Schmale, an author from Kansas, is here writing a book on that subject. As we open, Howard goes to the air. Wilson fumbles. Curry has it. Dwayne Curry, the Butkus nominee gets the turnover for Mississippi State. And this is a Bulldogs defense that was oh so opportunistic a season ago. Yes, this is why you run to the football all the time, the whole way. I think he gets hit by Lipscomb out here, fumbles the ball, and Curry, who's one of those guys that goes all the way, just comes up. There's Lipscomb, get, get, gets in there, number 13. And look at Curry, he's around the football. That's the difference between great football players and average football players is their hustle. First down, 10. Tigers turn it over. LSU leading by seven. Tate to Moles. Pass Twilly. It's a first down state. This is going to be a problem for LSU to try to cover Moles. Well, with James out of the game. Exactly. They lose James, and then what you have to do is you have to respect Moles' speed. He's already burned you for, what, an 80-yarder. Now what you have to do is you have to drop back, but that quick three-step drop, bang, they hit him in the flat, and he's got the ball. He's got enough room to turn around and pick up yardage. You come up, he's going to burn you deep. Moles has four receptions for 120 yards. Nakia Greer, the first back through down to the Tigers seven yard line, and they caught the Tigers coming up front. Wiley Jackie Sherrill, the veteran coach, getting a nice play call from Bruce Arians. And credit Brian Anderson, the center in there, for picking this up. 65 does a great job. Just turns the blitz man, and bang, they pop it right up the middle. John Vaughn plays. Ball at the seven yard line, second and three for State. Jones. Bernard Walker was over there to give coverage. That's an interesting call. You've gotten the ball down there. You've got four downs to get it in. And you know he doesn't have much confidence in his kicker. No, he doesn't. You see the contact there. The ball is actually thrown behind. The only person who had a, first, a chance to intercept it is 24, Walker. But I wonder why you just don't run the football in in that situation. You got third down, you got about three yards. You had second down and three yards to go. Just play strength, power, football, right up the gut. In the old days, Jackie would have prescribed some power football. But the times, they are changing. Moles dropped it. And you know he felt the pressure. Those elastic arms. <laughs> 
I think were impacted greatly from Linton and Crawford, who had him sandwiched. Well, that was a tough pass, too. Yeah. Big, big men in his face, and he had to just drill it in there. Most really didn't get a good look, but boy, this pressure's on this young man. Tim Rogers out of the hold of Jim Westbrook. You can't get two opportunities down here and not come away with points. 24 yards right through the uprights. He had the right hash mark that time. And Tim, that does make a difference with a right-footed soccer-style kicker because they have a normal tendency to draw that ball to the left, kind of like you playing golf the other day. <laughs> 551 remaining in the second and LSU leading it 14 to 10. Boy, we have enjoyed our stay here in Starkville. What gracious hosts we have at Mississippi State. Now I know why you come in on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. <laughs> I mean, you play golf, you go out to dinner. Oh, man. <laughs> We've got a fine halftime show coming up. And of course, your host, as always, will be Bob Kessling, the busiest man in the SEC. He is definitely. He dips all around. I mean, last week he was did our game. He was back at Tennessee. I mean, he's all over the place. So, Bob, what gives at halftime? Well, you got to keep jumping. You know that, Tim. <laughs> at halftime, we're going to check with on one of the outstanding young men in this league, a wide receiver for LSU, who's got his thoughts turned toward the future. We'll check another scores around the SEC, and also we'll talk about the leaders in the conference right now all that coming up at halftime yeah shedrick wilson working in the da's office during the offseason tennyson look out look out finally they get him or do they at the 41 or 42 yard line oh he is slippery Boy, you know what you kick short so he doesn't get a chance to return it he runs up you expect your coverage to be there and then he comes all the way across the field picking up blocks and you look up and you got the ball on the 40 yard line chauncey mcgee made the tackle outstanding field position with 537 remaining there's the golden band from tigerland Big series here for Howard. You want to go in on a positive note. You want to drive down, at least get a, a field goal try or control the ball in this last five and a half minutes. Kennison in motion. Falk. Cannot turn the corner. Jimmy Lipscomb, the strong safety, comes up to meet him. Spend New Year's Day at the Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida. Send a postcard with your name, address, and telephone number to the address you see and register to win a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare by Continental Airlines. The winner will be announced during the SEC Game of the Week on November 25th. You must be 21 years of age or older to enter. LSU with a seven-point lead. And with the ball, second down eight. Chris Hill gives motion. Quick out to Kennison. To the 46-yard line. Well, Jerry DiNardo's offensive scheme, as called by Morris Watts, his offensive coordinator, definitely getting Kennison involved and you may see him on a reverse before the day is done. Sure. He's got just he's got that great speed so he gets just like Moult he gets that separation. He makes a simple little cut there and picks up about five yards for the first down. Big time player. A little bit of suspect as to how well he catches the ball on passes but he's caught it well today. Are down prior to the snap. That'll slow things down. I don't think the time ran out. No. Nope. Jimmy Harper will tell us. We have a substitution violation on the white team. Substitute comes into the game. The man he replaces has to be out within three seconds. That was Robert Toomer who came in illegally. And speaking of legal aspects, the district attorney of East Baton Rouge Parish is Doug Morrow, who was the MVP of the 1964 Sugar Bowl. He kicked the winning field goal against Syracuse, and he gave Shedrick Wilson, who's the first team captain since... 1964 a job as an investigator he wants to be a lawyer and perhaps even a judge before his days are done second and 15 
That's Kendall Cleveland wrapped up behind that's the line Kendall of scrimmage. Yeah, that's a free five yards for LSU because Mississippi State jumped in the neutral zone. That was James Greer that got in there. Boy, now that's a hoss, James Greer. 6'6", 299 pounds. They didn't think he was going to have a chance to play today, but you can't keep those big linemen down. I think they said he knocked out two quarterbacks, am I right? That's right. Two quarterbacks. Bob Kessling has more downstairs. And you know, Tim, uh, Jimmy Harper is one of the veteran officials in the SEC and in college football, for that matter, in his 33rd year. Uh, recently in Southern Living, one of the popular magazines in this part of the country, they did a feature story in SEC football and featured Jimmy Harper in the story. I asked him today about it. Was he kind of flattered by it? By it? He said, well, basically he thought it was not, uh, it, it was under, uh, overly... What do I want to say? Underestimated was what I want to say. He said he should have been a lot more about him, but he was tongue-in-cheek. He said that Harper is one of the great officials in all of college football. You're right. He certainly is, and, and Bob spends a lot of time with the officials flying in on charter. Oh, I know. He flies back and forth with But you know what's nice to see? Officials like that have got a presence in the game. They walk around and they just command respect, and the players respect them. Everybody does. I mean, that's a... You, you can always tell those longtime officials, and they love the game more than uh, most of the players. Second and nine. <laughs> Wide open, the tight end hill. Knocked out just short of the 35-yard line. Appears to be shy of the first down. That's a converted wide receiver, Chris Hill. Over to tight end. You'll see him utilized more as a receiver than LaFleur or Trey Champagne, more of a, a blocking variety of tight end. And that's an interesting play. What they do is they take the tight end, they put him in a slot, run him in motion, and they actually snap the ball while he's in motion and then shoot him through the line back out into the flat. They've he, done it two or three times. He's one of three hills out of Mansfield, Louisiana, all brothers, a part of this LSU team. Larry Campbell, the linebacker, setting up. Falk, first down. On third and less than a yard, Kevin Falk, a little hurdle job. Now when you think of Mansfield, Louisiana, you think of uh, Vida Blue. You remember that? Well, what a pitcher he was. You know, it's interesting. I was looking at the uh, shoulder pads that Falk is, is wearing. He's got that big back plate. It hangs down out the back. It's part of the shoulder pads, and it's so you don't get that shot in the back when you turn back in, those big linemen coming in on you. Nicky Savoy is the tight end now as he'll leave. Toomer blocking for Cleveland. Oh, this is a power run by Cleveland who not only can run around you but over you. Walt Harris made the tackle on the bulletin board in the Mississippi State locker room. It said Kendall Cleveland. This guy can take you one-on-one -on -one and bowl you over. This, you almost get the feeling that LSU is returning to those that magic that you talked about in the opening, power football, that strength. You know, that, that play that you show is run every Halloween night in New Orleans, the Billy Cannon run against the uh, Ole Miss. That was some magic. Second and two. Kevin Falk off the left side. Al Cotton, the defensive end, number 54 out of Dallas, Texas, the ball. made the tackle. And big series here for Mississippi State. They've got to come up with a play. They've got to stop them. They've allowed LSU to control this last four or five minutes. We're down under a minute and a half. They want to at least hold them to a field goal try. Don't let them go in for a score. This is a defense that has played better in the second quarter, Mississippi State. You may be seeing two teams in the south with as much talent at the skill positions as you'll see in any one given game. Markers are down. Falk out of bounds. I believe we may have procedure. The motion back appeared to be headed forward prior to the snap. Yeah, the, the flag is thrown along the front line of and That's exactly what it is. Team. Man in motion, turned up field before the ball was snapped. That was Eddie Kennison, the motion back, number two. And now it's a five-yard penalty, but actually, in actuality, it's about a 10 or 11-yard penalty because it was going to be first down on about the 17-yard line, and now it's going to be third down on what, about the 35? Big penalty. So it nullifies that run from Falk. 
Tigers have absorbed 46 yards on seven penalties in this first half, so this has not been an error-free show, but it has been an exciting show offensively. Jamie Howard will call a timeout. Timeout at the field. Well, you hate to waste a timeout like that because you ran about 25 seconds off the clock. Take on St. John's this afternoon at 4 p.m. Last week, the in the first half, Classic. LSU's offense was uh, conservative, John. I think would be the statement that, that, that really does apply. They grew in confidence against Texas A&M in the second half, and we have seen a carryover into the first half of this game, particularly where Howard is concerned. Yeah, well, I, we, we looked at their offense on, on tape, and we thought very, very basic football. No imagination, but today it's a much different offense. I think that has to do with the coaches getting to know the players, players getting to know the coaches. They, they questioned during preseason. They said, what in the world are we doing out here? This coach is killing us. But I think now all those things come together, and you get that offensive game plan. Another item is this, this Mississippi State secondary, not as capable of covering man on man as was Texas A&M. And with that comes confidence for your offense. Absolutely. I was going to ask you one quick question. When did you ever see a clock that, that does, shows the tenths of a second? I know in the NBA, you do a lot of NBA <laughs> games, but I, I mean, I'm looking up 51.0 seconds. Hey man, it's the 90. <laughs> Third and seven. Howard, complete to Hill. First down, Tigers at the 20-yard line. And another timeout called by Shedrick Wilson, the Tigers team captain. You know, I was talking with uh, Doug Morrow about Shedrick Wilson and the kind of young man he is, a true leader. And he told me that he actually called Doug, and, and he didn't even know that Doug was the analyst on the LSU football network with Jim Hawthorne calling the games so they had a nice pleasant conversation he did get the the job the summer job working as an investigator and he told him you know judge they still call Doug judge because uh, prior to being a district attorney he was a judge in Baton Rouge he said I'm coming after your job one day <laughs> and I'll bet you the judge turned around and said you know I, I see you every week <laughs> there were some questions in the offseason about Jamie Howard the LSU quarterback he did stick around opting not to play Braves baseball I, I don't know that it was a matter of he was so confident in himself that he came back he had a tough experience last year uh, the fans were on him he's got a great love for LSU and I think he's got a competitive fire in him that says that's not the way he wanted his career to end it LSU. You know, an interesting thing, as bad as it was last year for Jamie Howard, one of the great things that happened is during those tough times, he met a young lady named Catherine, and they're engaged to be married. So if it's not all bad sometimes. Absolutely. And Jerry DiNardo has given faith back to that arm of Jamie Howard. I, we should mention that John Sherholtz, the general manager of the Atlanta Braves and some of the other Braves brass, not at all happy that this bonus baby didn't spend time towing the rubber during the offseason. Incomplete. Tennyson, the intended receiver. Well, you've got 38 seconds, 38.7 seconds, excuse me. But anyway, you've got, you've got 38 seconds to play. You're second down on about the 20-yard line. You want to throw to the end zone. You have one timeout left, so that's going to help you if you, if you catch it in bounds. But right now, you don't want to give up that possible field goal try. Howard, 8 of 12 on the day. For 138 yards. Markers down. No play. I think I saw a movement along the line of LSU. Now, there's an interesting rule change this year. If the defensive play is an illegal procedure, offensive line movement before the snap, five yards, he played it down. Appeared to be the tight end, Savoy, who's getting extra playing time at the tight end spot with David LaFleur unavailable for Jerry DiNardo this week. Yeah, we had that rule explained to us, Tim, that if the defensive man jumps into the neutral zone, 
the offensive player can react, but it has to be the one right in his proximity. Can't be someone down far down the line. Second down, 15. Kendall Cleveland wrapped up in a hurry off the left side. Larry Williams does the honors. Senior out of Moorhead, 6'4", 283 pounder. I love that middle linebacker, Dwayne Curry. Big man in there. He's number 44. He just kind of swallows them. You can always tell those tough middle linebackers when they don't wear any forearm pads. They just kind of, they're just kind of bare skinned out there. They just swallow them. Obviously setting up for the field goal try from Lafleur who remembers Scott Field very well. He was the reason LSU won the game two years ago here. Now, interesting, you run the clock down to 3.7 seconds, or three seconds. If you have that fumbled snap, it's over. I, don't, I think you ought to run it down to about 10, 12 seconds. If you get the fumbled snap, then you can call timeout, try it again. You run it down to three seconds on third down, you got one try. Andre LaFleur, a walk-on two years ago, finally claimed that scholarship just about the time an All-American out of high school, Wade Ritchie, had been picked up. His accuracy has been tremendous, but his moment came two years ago after a number of misses through the course of a game, our SEC flashback. Andre LaFleur with the game on the line. And as they say, it may not be pretty, but if it's effective, that's all that matters. It was, and the Tigers got the W. And here he is now from 41 yards. A little better, wouldn't you say? I'd say he's grown in confidence with that scholarship. Absolutely, a lot stronger kick. We are at halftime, and the Tigers come up with a critical three as Jerry DiNardo looks for his first win in the SEC at LSU. Let's go down to Bob Gessling, Bob. Coach, your team showed a lot of poise after getting stung early. Yeah, Bob, we're, we're, doing, we're doing some things that really don't need to be doing. We're foolish penalties, and we're a little sloppy on that, and I'm a little disappointed, but I'm not disappointed in the way they're fighting. Offensively, you came back and moved the ball right down the field. Yeah, and, and we've got a good plan. We just need to make sure it's better second half than first. You happy with the first half so far? I'm happy we're winning. i got some things we can talk about. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Jerry DiNardo, the coach of the LSU Tigers. His team goes to the locker room, leading here in Starkville. Back with halftime activities in just a moment. Good half. Today's Lee Apparel SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Lee Apparel. With new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By Sonic, who invites you to drive in for a change. By your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. Good first half of football here at Starkville. The LSU Tigers leading Mississippi State by a score of 17 to 10. Bob Kessling back with you here at halftime. It's Scott Field in Starkville. Interesting first half because the very first play from scrimmage, Mississippi State came up and threw the bomb. Derek Tate, Derek Moles, that play went 80 yards, and Mississippi State, 15 seconds into the game, had a 7-0 lead. But then LSU took the ball right back down the field and scored, had a long drive, and Kevin Falk was able to push it in to make it 7-7. Then the play of the first half that turned the momentum completely around, Eddie Kennison, the heavy-duty, long-range threat of the LSU Tigers, gets behind the secondary, takes it in, 47 yards. That made it 14-7 LSU. The stat of the first half, LSU's defense holds Mississippi State to only 17 yards rushing at 183 yards passing, 200 yards on the total offensive stat in the first half for Mississippi State. So LSU's defense has played extremely well. Remember, this is the same defense that last year led the SEC in total defense. So some big plays in this game. There were also some very big plays last week in the Southeastern Conference. 
Sonic's Best of the SEC is brought to you by Sonic Drive-In Restaurants, who invite you to drive in for a change. The leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference, Robert Edwards of the Georgia Bulldogs. In his first game at tailback, he scored five touchdowns and four on the ground to lead Georgia to a victory last week against South Carolina. Jay Graham made also his first start at tailback for Tennessee and had 144 yards rushing. The top quarterback in the Southeastern Conference right now is Derek Tate of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. He had four touchdown passes last week in the Bulldogs' opening win against the University of Memphis. Patrick Nix broke Auburn records last week, and Mike Bobo had an impressive debut as Georgia's starting quarterback. The leading receiver in the Southeastern Conference is Stanley Pritchard, the tailback from the University of South Carolina. Chris Doring and also Heinz Ward had impressive first games in the SEC. As for all-purpose yards, Eddie Kennison of the LSU Tigers leads the way, and Robert Edwards with that impressive debut as second for the Georgia Bulldogs. And that's a look at Sonic's best of the SEC. So congratulations to all of those outstanding athletes in the SEC. Now it's time for our Nationwide Scholar Athlete of the Year of the Week. Our Nationwide Insurance SEC Scholar Athlete is defensive end Gabe Northern of the LSU Tigers. The senior from Baton Rouge has a perfect 4.0 GPA in communications last semester. Congratulations to Gabe Northern, our Nationwide Insurance Scholar Athlete of the Week. And Gabe makes no bones about it. He's going to take either mine or Tim Brando's job one of these days. At halftime, Gabe Northern and the LSU Tigers in front. And we'll continue from Starkville in just a moment. It's now time for our Reese's SEC Plays of the Week. Our Plays of the Week brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. And there's no wrong way to score a touchdown in the SEC. Just ask Vanderbilt's running back, Jermaine Johnson. He explodes through the Alabama defense on his way to a 75-yard touchdown strike. It was the longest running play of the week in the Southeastern Conference. Our Nutrageous Play of the Week is brought to you by Nutrageous Candy Bar. Give your mouth a party. Check out the toughness of George's senior wideout, Bryce Hunter. Catches the ball and gets smacked, loses his helmet, but keeps on churning out the yards. It'd be nutty to do that play after play, but Bryce Hunter is a part of our Reese's Plays of the Week. Our halftime score is 17 to 10 LSU over Mississippi State, the famous Maroon Band from Mississippi State University, concluding their halftime activities here at Scott Field. Now it's time for the Jefferson Pilot scoreboard, a rundown of what else is going on around in college football today. Other scores, you see Maryland in the third quarter leading North Carolina 18 to 10. Florida State going up to Death Valley 21 to 7. Florida State is leading at halftime over Tommy West, Clemson Tigers. Other scores, Nebraska in the Big Ten today on the road playing at Michigan State leading at halftime 20 to 7. Also at halftime, Texas Tech is surprising Penn State. Michigan shutting out the Memphis Tigers. Syracuse at halftime on top of Carolina by a score of 21 to 7. So that's a look at what else is going on around college football. Here in Starkville, it's a situation where the LSU Tigers will jolt it on the very first play of the game, but they've rallied to take the lead 17 to 10 here at halftime against Mississippi State. Back with more halftime activities from Scott Field, but first, a word from your local SEC station. Total offensive play. Chris Jones, two balls for 23. Each week, Advanced Auto Parts will be honoring an SEC football student athlete who gives back to the community. This week, Advanced Auto Parts Community Spirit Award goes to Mississippi State's Brian Anderson. The senior offensive lineman for the Bulldogs is a volunteer for the American Cancer Society and speaks at local elementary and high schools about drug awareness and the importance of staying in school. Advanced Auto Parts is proud to recognize Mississippi State's Brian Anderson and will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation in his honor. This is the only game in progress right now in the SEC. Here it's LSU on top of Mississippi State. Some other games in the conference, Arkansas, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia tonight, and of course the Florida Gators take on Kentucky. So a big weekend of SEC football. During the telecast, we've been talking about Shedrick Wilson, the outstanding wide receiver of the LSU Tigers. Let's take a look at this outstanding young man and his career ambitions. LSU senior flanker Shedrick Wilson makes his fair share of catches on the playing field for the Fighting Tigers of LSU every Saturday. 
but it's his desire to become a lawyer that he hopes to become his ultimate catch. While he's excelled on the playing field, he's also trying to become that lawyer. It was some grandmotherly advice that he got at an early age that pointed him toward his career goal. My brother and I were arguing, and I was trying to get my brother to see a point that I was trying to make. And my grandma walked in the room, and she was like, will y'all please hush? And I kept talking, and you know, my grandmother being the strict, stern southern lady that she is, she looked at me, and I thought she was gonna make some, you know, some sort of obscenity. But she looked at me with a real stern eye, and she said, boy, you would make a great lawyer. And ever since then, you know, it's been in the back of my mind. You know, I want to be a lawyer first for myself, and second for my grandmother and my family. So this past summer, Shedrick spent his time working at the local DA's office in Baton Rouge. My, my desire is to, to clean up the community. I think that it's up to myself and other people in the law business to go out, take the drugs off the streets, you know, cut the murder rates down in each city, that sort of thing. Shedrick one day wants to become a lawyer, but right now he wants to be the best football player he can be for the LSU Tigers. And there's his boss, Doug Morrow, the analyst on the LSU radio network, but also, of course, the district attorney who kept a close eye on Shedrick, not only today, but all during the summer as well. An outstanding young man. So, at halftime, LSU on top of Mississippi State to talk about the first half and go over the stats. Let's go back upstairs to Tim and Dave. Thanks, Bob. Of course, lawyering is all about taking care of one's possessions, and the possessions today for LSU offensively have been awfully fruitful. Oh, boy, it has been. It's been a track meet in this first half. I, I never expected a game like this, not the way it opened up and not the way it's continued in, the first, in this first half. Like a shot coming from a cannon, the Mississippi State offense hit very early and very effectively, and they'll need more of this. Yeah, first play, Eric Moulds, 80 yards. Tremendous concentration, separation. Boy, you can't ask for anything more than that for the first play of the game. Then it was LSU's turn. Good run here on the outside. Get that good block, and Falk goes in. Then Jamie Howard went to work. Well, this was a big play. This really broke Mississippi State's back to Kennison. Speed down the middle. After one miss, Tim Rogers came back to bring Mississippi State to within three. Actually, within, within four. But then this three from LaFleur made it a seven-point lead for LSU. Yeah, they drove the ball. They had good field position and uh, took advantage of it at the end of the half. There you see the, the, you see the stats, the total yards. Both teams really very effective. But I think there's uh, some danger signs for both of these. There have been some mental breakdowns as we look at Rose Rewind. Yes, um, some big mental breakdowns. The first one is that LSU has got to be able to find a way to stop Molds. They, yeah. they have got to stop Molds. He has got four receptions for uh, three, 120 yards. And they've got to eliminate mistakes, too, because they also had seven penalties in that first half. For Mississippi State, Tate has been good on the long passes, but he has not been, he's not run at all the uh, short pass game well. And then, of course, Establish a run. They only have 17 yards. That's unlike a Jackie Sherrill team. When we come back, the second half will get underway from the Golden Triangle in the Magnolia State. Mississippi State trailing LSU. Jefferson Pilot Sports' exclusive presentation of the Lee Apparel SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Lee Apparel. With new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By your local Mazda dealers. And by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. A near-capacity crowd in Starkville as the LSU Tigers looking for win number one of the Jerry DiNardo era have a seven-point lead over Mississippi State. The Bulldogs with the quick strike and then some tentativeness from their offense in the moments that followed in this game. Earlier, Bob Kessling had an opportunity to chat with head coach Jackie Sherrill. Momentum early, the big play, and then LSU took it away from him. Well, he had the big play, and then they came back, and the real big play was when they answered a third and eight. They threw the corner route, and we, we had two guys. We just didn't cover it and they came back and scored then we still had a chance at that time and then we turned it back back around and we just didn't throw and catch and, and you what know, you we, talk to him at halftime about well it's a new game i mean you start all over can't forget what you can't go ahead and play that one back so you got to start all over and 
if we'd made the catches and made a couple of things, uh, we had bad play on the screen. We threw it out of uh, behind and had to scramble. And then we also had another bad play on the screen. Coach, thanks. Okay. One change has been made with this kickoff. It's Brian Hazelwood, the freshman out of Clinton, Mississippi. Eddie Kennison and Eric Smith are back deep. You'll recall the Tigers won the toss and deferred. And the freshman was recruited for a reason. Yes, he was. The kickoff deep. Now, I thought they were going to redshirt him, but hey, he's a valuable commodity if he can kick that ball out of the end zone. Let's take a look at the possession chart for LSU in the first half. Again, you see it a little bit helter-skelter. The first one, great drive. They answered that Molds catch for 77-yard play, uh, touchdown drive, then a punt, another touchdown. They've done, they've kind of sputtered, but they've been in control. The only time Howard sputtered was when one of his receivers dropped one of his passes. I mean, he was truly outstanding. Falk, watch the speed if he can turn the corner. Unable to on the cutback. The cornerback, Bernard Ewell, made the stop. Well, that's a tough play for a cornerback to come up there. You're one-on-one. -on -one. you got a speed merchant coming out there, and you are all. You just have to break down, get in that great hitting position, and make that tackle, and that's what he did. 27, gain of seven, second down. Kevin Falk, 12 rushes for 41 yards. They're trying to get him more involved, and he has the ability to break one at any time. It was about this time last week Robert Edwards began to make his presence felt for Georgia. He is being showcased, and that's a first down beyond the 35 to the 37-yard line. Ewell made the tackle. Jackie Sherrill, so effective at Pitt, later at Texas A&M, the three-year sabbatical. He lost seven NFL players off of last year's team. And you look at the numbers for Mississippi State, he brought a presence, a credibility nationally and in this league that Mississippi State had not had really since Darrell Royal, who had a winning record only coaching here two years. Yeah, that's quite a record to come in. The previous 31 games, they were 3-28. and 28. He's 15-15-1. and one. Markers down. Mark King appeared to lift up the left offensive guard, number 62 for LSU, the senior from Homa, Louisiana. You know, Tim, you talked about... We've got Falk. illegal movement, offensive line before the snap, five yards. You Just, talked about Falk being the showcase. They really are. Last week he had 14 carries. He already, I believe he already has 14 carries now, 13 or 14, so he's a lot more into the offense. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, at some point in this season... Kendall Cleveland didn't move to fullback and Falk to tailback because he can run over people. Oh, he can. And we saw Cleveland up there. He's a blocker. Falk stopped for no game. Tripped up by Larry Williams, his third tackle of the game. LSU has really been without a fullback for some time. Now, Robert Toomer has come in for blocking purposes, but you have to go back to Charles Alexander and, and Hokey Gaijan, who uh, oh boy, was a you're, fullback. You're, you're reminiscing, now, yeah. reminiscing now. You know, it's interesting. Last year, fullbacks only had three carries. Yeah. All last year. So that shows you the the uh, evidence of what they, what they were doing in their game plan. They were just a blocking up back. Second down and 16. to Toomer, and a marker down in the LSU backfield is Robert Toomer, who can come out as a pass receiver from the fullback's position, made the grab. And where that's thrown, it's almost always holding, was right in the interior of the line. During the play, holding, offensive line, 10 yards, and spot a foul. These are the kinds of mistakes Jerry DiNardo was chatting with Bob Gessling about going into the intermission. Absolutely. They had seven penalties in that first half. And he's a coach you can see. When you see a coach bend over like that, you don't want to stand near him. You know he's upset. He's dejected a little bit. He said at halftime, I'm sure he told his kids, hey, we have got to clean up the game. We can't make mistakes. And you look at a penalty like that, they were going to get out to the 35-yard line. Now they've got it back on their own 15. Second down, 29. A time for Curry to pin his ears back 
and come after Jamie Howard. Linebackers stay in coverage. Howard for Kennison, incomplete. Ewell there, step for step with Eddie Kennison. Boy, and I saw Ewell, he just laid back his ears, and I mean, he was flying to stay up with Kennison. Good coverage, though. Knew he was going long, stayed with him, stayed in good position. I'm sure Jamie Howard and Jerry Donardo are thinking, let's, let's at least get enough to provide Kessler room to punt because the Tigers as well have had difficulty in their punt game. And one thing you don't want to do if you're LSU is you don't want to force the ball in. You don't want to throw one of those interceptions down here. This may be a field position play rather than an attempt for a first down. Incomplete. Markers down again in an area where holding could once again be the call. Although the preliminary indication is that Mississippi State is guilty of an infraction. Defending, flag on the oh, and they're clapping their hands on yeah. LSU's yeah. side. The center, Marcus Carmouche. We have a face mask on the defensive team. Uh, defensive lineman, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Wow. No wonder Marcus Carmouche, the center, was so happy. Junior out of Lafayette, and that's another mental error by Jackie Sherrill's team. Yeah, what that call is, is when that defensive lineman gets in there and rushes, he gets that hand on the face mask, you've got to take your hand off. He evidently used that face mask to pull or tear the, away the blocking uh, lineman in front of him. Big penalty. Tigers front line, particularly Fenneca, the right guard, has done a nice job in handling Sears and Williams. Cleveland. Cleveland. First down, Tigers at their 48-yard line. An example of the bullish nature of this redshirt freshman out of Orange, Texas. Boy, if you have a big penalty like this, your defense has stopped them. Watch the offense. Good block back there by Carmouche. And all of a sudden, now watch Cleveland. Good strength. Stays compact. You see, you can't get your arms around him. Stays down in that pocket. He's about six foot one, about 215 pounds. Very compact. And Toomer got a good block coming up through there in the lead. First and 10. <laughs> Cleveland running behind Fanica. See, I love the job the right side of that offensive line for LSU is doing. Fanica and Ben Bordelon, 66 and 68, providing room for Kendall Cleveland. Yeah, what you want to do as a defensive player, you have got to get off the block. If you're just going to run with the blocker, then the blocker wins. You have got to shed that blocker and get penetration. And right now, Fanica, he's six foot five, 307 pounds. He comes off the ball. He almost swallows that defensive lineman. You've got to shed blocks if you're on defense. A red shirt freshman, second and four. Falk turns it up. Look out, Kevin Falk. That's his best run of the day to the 35-yard line of Mississippi State, and he did a lot of that on his own. Well, you know what? They missed the snap count. You didn't see the offensive line move. Watch, see if we can see this again from the line. They snapped the ball. The offensive guard and tackle on this side didn't even move. This is all Falk all by himself. What a move there to get back inside. Balance. That's what they call it when you those great running backs have got balance. When they get hit, it's kind of like a ping pong ball bouncing around and picking up yards. Gregory Favors finally knocked him down. The sophomore from Atlanta for Mississippi State. Kendall Cleveland cracks down inside the Bulldogs 20. 29-yard line. Nice gain of about five, and the Tigers' rushing game now becoming a real factor in this drive. Well, you look back to that penalty, that face mask penalty. They would have given the ball up at midfield. Now they've driven the ball across midfield. Oftentimes, what seems like just a small penalty is compounded by the fact that the offense keeps the ball. A problem spot with the Tigers' demise and their six losing seasons has been that offensive line. But it has been good today. Second and five. There's an answer from the Bulldogs defense. 
courtesy Dwayne Curry. Junior out of Pascagoula, Mississippi, who has had double-digit tackles in as many as 10 consecutive games last year. Watch this. Slide, slide. Now step forward. Look at those big arms swing out there. No pads on those arms. Those are just bare. He doesn't get hurt. That's the big man. He had 11 tackles last week to keep that string alive for Mississippi State's defense. And Tim, this is, I believe, the 11th play of the drive. Third down and four. Chris Hill, first down inside Mississippi State's 20. Near the 16-yard line. Izell McGill, the right corner, along with Jimmy Lipscomb, the strong safety combined. Well, you talked about losing LaFleur. Chris Hill comes in here. Great look at the ball. You want to catch the ball away from your body. Don't catch it in next to your pads. Watch where he catches it. See way out, then those big hands. Just put that thing away. Don't fumble it. Don't let it get ripped out. You know, if he gains some weight, he's going to have enormous potential as a downfield receiver at tight end. Cleveland again a flag down. Trying the right side, but Mississippi State snuffed it out. Paul Lacoste. An, an interesting story indeed, Lacoste. His brother passed away just before last week's game against Memphis. Defensive line coach. Violation neutral zone. Defensive team lining up in the neutral zone. Defensive line coach Pete Jenkins told me he couldn't believe that he dressed out for last week's game. True sign of courage for that young man, affording himself an opportunity to play when you know he was having to deal with a lot mentally. And there's his line coach, Pete Jenkins, who spent nine years at LSU. He was, in fact, one of the top recruiters there during the 80s. You see the penalties. LSU has doubled that of Mississippi State. play continued that he might sneak into the end zone. Curry and Raymond G combined to make the tackle. Well, the, the Yule has got to make this tackle on a play. There's Falk. Now watch those eyes. Concentrate on where you're going. Keep your eyes open. Watch right here. He gets hit. I mean, he's hit four yards in the backfield. you got to hang on. Can't let him do that because instead of getting about a four-yard loss, they get about a nine-yard gain. Second and one with the ball. Just outside the Bulldogs' six-yard line. Hill remains in the game, joined by Smith and Kinnison. Cleveland, touchdown! up front with the big lineman. Watch Cleveland make the adjustment right there. He's looking weak side now. Back to the strong side and you see him just find that seam and just rumble on through there. The Tigers make good on that break. The penalty flag against Mississippi State allows LSU a methodical 13-play drive, and Cleveland, with a baker's dozen on the ground, gives LSU the lead. Eric Moles is back deep, and the kick from Lafleur is a pooch kick. Rather than Ritchie, they go with Lafleur, taken by an up-back, and Mississippi State will get quality field position. Buckhalter... The reserve running back brings it up. And the scoring drive, just a dozen plays, but nine of those were on the ground. Nine of the 12 plays on the ground. The critical penalty against Mississippi State, allowing Cleveland a chance for his third touchdown this season. Uh, just a huge penalty. We talked about it when it happened. It was third down and about 35 yards to go. They got a face mask penalty. It was an automatic first down. Kept that drive alive, and LSU capitalized on it. First and ten. Torrey James is not in the game. He was injured earlier, and that will hurt the LSU secondary. Moles in 
incomplete. Pass intended for Chris Jones. Burger King presents the first ever college football top 10 fan poll where you, the fan, votes on who's number one. This week's number one team, to no one's surprise, is Florida State. I'll tell you the team that interests me most in that group of top 10 teams, Ohio State. John Cooper must have known something when he turned down LSU's offer. Go to Burger King and find out how you can make your team number one. Derek Tate's numbers on the day as Chris Jones and Moles in motion on second and ten. There's Moles. It's about a six-yard gain, but any time he touches it, you're thinking, oh, it could be for far more than that. Absolutely. You give him an open field, let him fake one or two guys, and he's going to break it. This is just a simple little slant pattern, run underneath the coverage, come back, catch the ball now, give him separation. He gets an extra step there, you'd be surprised how many yards he can pick out. With that 80-yard touchdown reception, he's averaging over 25 per catch. it incomplete and he got hammered by Stansberry who was coming in off the blitz at that linebacker spot. Oh he got leveled. He saw Stansberry from the from his right eye from his right side and he had to throw the ball early. Right there he sees Stansberry he just kind of lofted the ball up but he never saw where it came down. Sheston Coleman was the intended receiver. So a punt formation for Mississippi State. Andy Russ We'll get it off around his 30. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, nice. Right with it. Oh, nice recovery. Fair catch called for by Kennison and into the end zone. Why didn't he run with it? Oh, my goodness. He had fourth down about four yards. When he dropped that ball, Tim, he could have run up the middle. Wow. LSU leads by two touchdowns, and we'll be back after this word from your local SEC station. Tim, if Andy Russ, when he sees this picture, he's going to say, oh, my goodness. He had fourth down and four. Watch the snap. He drops the ball. Now, watch when he picks up. Look at the blockers he had out in front of him. Fourth down and four. He could have run for 15 yards. Oh, mercy. First and 10 LSU at their 20. Four. Oh, nice play by Lipscomb. That's his fifth tackle of the afternoon. He's been awfully active. The junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. LSU's offense stymied in their first opportunity early in the game after that touchdown. But in the second half, a mistake by Jackie Sherrill's defense afforded LSU a chance to cash in, and they did exactly that with Kendall Cleveland's touchdown run. And I can tell you this, a 24 to 4 10 lead is not a comfortable lead when you're playing against Jackie Sherrill. Falk. A breakaway ability evidenced there. Beyond the 30 to the 33 yard line, and he had a nice hole with which to work. And a late flag comes down. Boy, when you get that vision in the hole, that running back, watch this, slide over now. The big lineman and find it. Little tiny seam there, he bursts through for big yardage. And they're going to penalize LSU on that play. Look at Donardo saying, who did it? It may be a dead ball penalty, Tim, where yeah, it was a late flag. Yeah, a dead ball penalty. The, the run counts, and then you mark it off from the spot of the run. Yeah, and you see Jerry DiNardo searching for an explanation. Well, we really couldn't hear it because we were in replay, but uh, look at Jerry DiNardo. Come over and explain it to me. I want to know what happened. You better be careful. You can't go out there. I wonder, if, and we will get an explanation at some point. Bob Gessling is busy trying to find out. Celebration rule, perhaps, as evidenced here. Jerry DiNardo is upset. Watch Falk here at the tail end. Is that celebration? Uh, you see, 
Now see, this is the part of the celebration rule that we scrutinized after talking with Bobby Gasden, who really is doing as, as good a job in trying to execute this rule, but it comes back down to judgment. As a coach, you need to know, is the referee or the line judge a Republican, a Democrat? <laughs> I mean, you just don't know. Yeah. If you're conservative, you might call that uh, a celebration. Tell you this, it was not a blatant no. celebration where you take the helmet off and draw all the attention. I mean, he just got up and kind of, you know, like kind of saying, "Boy, did a good job that time." Uh, Kendall Cleveland with that carry stopped for little or no gain. Larry Williams made the tackle. Well, the one thing that we don't know that the officials do is what might be said down there. Yeah, that can be a form of taunting which uh, the taunting rule was in fact in place a year ago and now they've added to that with the celebration rule which we've spent a great deal of time talking about and it's and it's it's for the good of the game it really is it's for the good of the game it's to keep players from showcasing themselves and all the choreography in the end zones we have an injured bulldog or tiger i beg your pardon down on the field there's so many trainers around, but I can't see who it is. Yep. Bob Kessling has more information on Al Cotton for us at Mississippi State, their linebacker. Yeah, he came in with kind of a tight hamstring, as you can see. It's tightened up on him again. They've iced it. They've wrapped it. They hope he can return, but they are listing him as doubtful right now. They don't know if he can go or not. And, of course, one big loss has also been Clay Mack, the defensive back for Mississippi State. He's in street clothes, so now a couple of big losses for this Mississippi State team. On the other side, uh, Bob, Torrey James, as you look at Clay Mack, the freshman from Batesville, Mississippi. LSU lost Torrey James in the first half. We've not seen him return, and now Kendall Cleveland down on the field, and uh, you know how important he's been to Jerry DiNardo offensively, particularly on that last drive. Freshman tailback. Well, the way he's walking, it almost looks like he might have cramped up. Yep. When you walk with those straight legs, what you're trying to do is not put, put that pressure on the back of the leg. Second down. How about that? <laughs> For Jefferson Pilot Sports, just plain spectacular. Those TV wannabes know how to write, right? Oh, I hear you. <laughs> Second and ten. is hammered. Walt Harris in on that pile, joined by Corey Sears, number 95, the senior out of University City. Boy, nowhere to go when you turn it back inside. This is what you want your defense to do. Corner come up, turn it back in. Watch the corner pop in there, turn it back in, and when he turns back in, he gets smacked. Sears goes just 6'4", 310. But to the credit of LSU's offensive line, particularly Bordelon and Fanica on that right side, we haven't called his name that often. Maybe that just plain spectacular was someone was at your speech the other <laughs> night. Standing ovation in the speech department. On third down, Jennison. And that play by Lipscomb was very important because there was no contain, at least for the moment, with that track sprinter speed of Kennison's. They needed to make that grab. It is a first down, though. And did you watch Kennison look at the flag? He looked at the marker on the ground here. Look at him right there. He sees it. Now watch him just reach and scramble out and gets the first down. LSU with the ball at their 27. 315 and counting here in the third quarter. Kennison, three receptions today, one a big one for a touchdown. Mississippi State may have it. Lipskin comes up with it. And Mississippi State does have it. Tim, there is a block by Wilson. That's incredible. Shedrick Wilson, number six. Watch in the, in the right of your paper. You might see it right here in the right of your screen. Boy, it was a big block. But there's the fumble clearly out while he was up. Yule stripped it. Lipscomb came up with it. 
Tim, good hustle here by Yule to come in and strip the ball. Right there, he strips it. Now watch what happens to the ball. It just kind of lays there. It's there, it's there, it's there. Somebody fall on the ball. And Lipscomb comes in and recovers it. Falk, 20 rushes, 115 yards, but he put it on the ground. And remember that play should state mount a comeback. That's McFarland again, piercing through from that tackle spot to hammer Keeper McGee. A loss on the play, perhaps as much as a yard, maybe two. And his coach said every snap he gets better. That's a hoss. 6'1", 330, he said he came in. He's now about 300. What we're finding out today is that Mississippi State minus Kendall Watkins, an outstanding draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys, unable to get the ground game going. And that puts added pressure on Tate in this series. McGee. Tackle by Stansberry up to the 37-yard line. As a matter of fact, this is a Bulldogs team that, you know, everyone expects them to get better, but it's a difficult chore when you lose this many yeah, off your team. Look how many players went into the NFL draft. That's quite a compliment. Watkins, particularly at that tight end spot. I mean, he could just cave in how the big quarterback. Was he? Well, Wasn't he about 290 or so? He was huge. 299 pounds, now working for Jerry Jones. Shotgun. LSU got in the neutral zone again. I think Northern might have been guilty. Now there may be an example of that new rule. The, the defensive player jumped in the neutral zone and the offensive player reacted to it. We have the defensive lineman into the neutral zone causing a reflex by the offense five yards on the defense and it was gabe northern outside. you know he is an outside pass rusher and in a third and long he really wanted to get a head start oh yeah well you know you talked about the size of this team it's quite a different size as far as the lines they were huge last year john jennings and robert hicks in and a twin tight end look McGee. Keeper McGee with markers down in the Mississippi State backfield to the 46-yard line of LSU. And that flag is thrown right along the line of scrimmage. They have got to look in at the football. The They're lining up in the neutral zone. The fine, first time. That's 13 penalties against Jerry Donardo's Tigers. Almost half of them have been neutral zone violations. Good vision here. Look, pick up that blocker and then scoot through the hole. Get that first down yardage. Protect the football. Now that Jerry DiNardo has taken off that headset so many times. He's worn out his ears today to yell at his defensive lineman, stay onside. They made a lot of foolish penalties. Moles lining up with Twilly at the bottom of your screen. First and 10, Mississippi State. He's looking for Moles. Tate, who has 4-5 speed inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. You know, the fans would love to see Derek carry the ball more, but in truth, that's not what this offensive scheme of Bruce Arians is all about. That's exactly right. It's interesting that he was, that's the first time we've really seen him put the football down and find that little seam and pick up the yardage. Did a good job. You see he checks that wristband, signaled in what play they want. They may go for it. Second down in about two yards. Why not take a chance and go to Moles? Time winding down here in the third quarter. McGee battling off the strong side with that extra lineman in there, very close to the first down. Maybe a bit shy for Jackie Sherrill. He'll face, in all likelihood, a third and short when we come back for the fourth quarter. Starkville, Mississippi, the site the Tigers have the lead. Arkansas and Alabama coming up next week from Tuscaloosa, Bryant-Denny Stadium. Gene Stallings meeting up with Danny Ford as the Hogs try to get untracked. And of course, they're playing South Carolina today. Well, you know, it's been said by no less than Jerry Clower, a Mississippi State graduate, that the main girl in town isn't the game, it's the tailgating. And the <laughs> RVs from LSU are, in fact, here today. Tate on third and short, dumps it. 
first down to Nakia Greer. Well, you wanted a pass on second down. Instead, you get it on third and short. Yeah, that's an interesting pass. I, I didn't know why they didn't go for it on second down, but they come up, they bring him out of the backfield. He's one-on-one -on -one with those backers. He picks up positive yardage. Let's take a look at our lead through three quarters stats. Passing yards and total yards. The Tigers doing it more on the ground in a methodical fashion in the second half. Yeah, they had to st establish that running game. They only had 17 or 18 yards at half. Now they've got 75. McGee trying the left side. Anthony McFarland, the first to get there again. Number 94. Well, this is a huge series for, M uh, for Mississippi State. You've got to be able to drive that football. They've driven it. They've controlled it. On the ground, as you said, they've been very patient. They haven't tried to strike fast. It's typical Jackie Sherrill offense. You've just got to come in and get a score. You've got to get some points back. You're down 14. He knows it. You keep waiting for moles, particularly with LSU secondary minus Torrey James. the 33 Stansbury the linebacker coming on the blitz that's his first sack his sixth tackle of the afternoon interesting it's a delayed blitz you see Stansbury come back inside just breaks free he got the two outside linemen they would they went out and opened up that inside seam he just delays a second and comes roaring right up the gut that's an example of uh, staying in your lane exactly good coordination between the end to tackle and the linebacker third and 17 crucial play for the Bulldogs offense Jones is in the game out of the shotgun three wideouts Tate to Jones incomplete fans want a flag they're not going to get one in fact Jones did a pretty good job of becoming a defender because that one had interception written all over it well I think Jones may have seen that safety coming his way it's a slant in post pattern ball's not thrown poorly look at it but see you got to catch that thing yep. But he see, I think he saw the safety coming in there, number 24, Walker. He kind of took his eye off it a little bit, but you got to catch that ball. And he's had a couple of those drops today. Hazelwood will try a 50-yard field goal. Brian Hazelwood. Markers down again. Kick was no good, but the flag came down prior to the snap. Well, LSU was trying to change people off the field. They may have got caught with too many men on the field. Yeah, they did. For the snap, timeout has been called by White. So the Tigers forced to take that timeout, and they do allow it. Jackie Sherrill disagrees. He would have loved to have seen a flag. We'll be back. It's a two-touchdown lead for LSU, so you figure three possessions for scores for Mississippi State. Hazelwood is in to attempt the 50-yarder after the timeout. He's a freshman. He's a freshman. He's got a great leg, though. He's got the strength to get it there. Wide right, and no good. But wow, did you see how long it was? Tigers control Jackie Sherrill's troops. And again, I'm, I'm really impressed with LSU being able to take away moles in this half. There's our Jefferson Pilot Sports scoreboard. Clemson trying to hang with number one Florida State. Look at Texas Tech. The job they're doing at State College. East Carolina giving it to Syracuse, coming off that important win against North Carolina. And what about Maryland beating North Carolina? Yeah. Kennison near a first down at the 42-yard line. LSU could put the game away with this possession. And they had an opportunity to perhaps do just that prior to Fox fumble. Mississippi State unable to cash in. Now, you talked about it. At halftime on Rose Rewind, Tate, a little tentative, rushing passes, and when he has it, he's had some drops. Yeah. He's yeah, had a he, number of drops yes, today. But when he's got the time to stand back there and look long, he's been very accurate, but he rushed those, those passes in the early part of this game.
tackle right in here, and right there, he's got to hold on, got to hope for help, but there's no one going to catch Falk from behind. You talked about the magic returning. The magic may be returning. The extra point was good. Showcasing freshmen on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Last week, Edwards. This week, Falk. LSU with a three touchdown lead. Robert Edwards, the junior converted cornerback last week, showcased and today it's Kevin Falk. Fair catch called on the pooch kick by Nakia Greer. And there you see Falk. And folks, you may begin thinking about retiring the jersey right now. I mean, this is a youngster that, if he can avoid injury, will move into the category of an Alexander, Robisky, Harvey Williams, Dalton Hilliard. Gary James, 58 yards on the touchdown run, culminating a very quick 51-second drive. First and 10, Mississippi State. And they've got to muster something in a hurry. Tate, incomplete. And you can see that Derek Tate getting some happy feet here in the second half. Well, now it's flat-out pass time. Now it's going to be three passes, three passes, three passes, because they gave up. They, they had a great drive. They established the run again, but they came up dry. Didn't even get a, a real field goal, a good shot at a field goal. All of a sudden, they get scored. Now they've got to pass the ball, and LSU knows it. Now LSU, they got all their weight on their hands, and they're flying after the football. Marker down, pass complete. Shaston Coleman makes the grab near the 41-yard line. That was Gabe Norman who uh, Northern who broke up through the middle. He may have gotten held. Yep, that's the preliminary indication. That will nullify the play. Bruce Arians, the offensive coordinator, having to change things up this year. A brilliant offensive mind, but he'll have to come up with a great deal in the remaining 12:09 if his team is to make a comeback. Boy, how things have changed since that quick strike on the game's opening play. Incomplete. Jim, I think you have to give a lot of credit to these coaches because that first strike was 80 yards. I mean, you're, on, you're standing on your heels, and they never lost, LSU never lost their composure. The announcers for today's game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. They're down at 25. Eric Moles has been shut down by LSU's perimeter in the second half. Overthrows his man. Pass badly overthrown, intended for Michael Brown, and he had a step. Yeah, he had a good step, but Tate just, as you talked about, a little bit tentative there. He just does not have that that feel in this in this second half. He's been three and out, three and out. You just can't do that. And when you drive the football the length of the field, you've got to get points. Punt time for Mississippi State. Andy Russ will handle the chore. Fair catch called for, and a, an LSU bounce at the 49-yard line. Bob Kessling is down on the sidelines with uh, someone who certainly has a personal stake in the outcome of this game. Not really on the sidelines, Tim. We got the best seat in the house. This is Hunter Howard. This is Jamie's brother. He hasn't moved from this spot all game. It's been a good game. Your brother's played well, hasn't he? Yes, sir. An uh, interesting story. Originally, you know, Jamie, of course, went to high school in Lafayette, Louisiana. Then the, the family moved to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So now you're a Mississippian, huh? Yes, sir. Was it tough in school this week? Not really. Most everybody knows your brother plays for LSU, though, don't they? Yeah. Now, you, you haven't started playing football yet, though, have you? No, because my brother is games are on Saturday, and so if I played the, all the games, it's going to be on Saturday, so I can play. Okay, but you're going to play one day, aren't you? Yeah, next year. Be a quarterback. I don't care where 
Mother Courtney. You're supposed to say hi to Grandma too, aren't you? Yes, sir. Hey, good mother. Also, JB's folks are right back here, so the Howards are having a big day up in the stands, Tim. Uh, you have to be happy for them. They, they went through so much. You can imagine as difficult as it was for Jamie last year in the wake of that second half on the Plains at Auburn, how bad it must have felt to be a parent dealing with a young child going through that at a, at a tender time in his life. But you know what's amazing? That's typical of those great athletes. Man, I will not quit. I'm going to come back. I'm going to show them. I don't care what the score is. I'm coming back. Cleveland will get the ball again. He got eight on the last play. And on second and two, he appears to be a yard shy of the first down. Larry Campbell made the tackle, and the clock now shows 10.40 and counting here in the fourth quarter at Scott Field. And this is Donardo football. This is what he likes to do. Run that clock, and you've got an excellent field general there, and Howard coming up, looking at that play clock, knowing how much time's on it, taking it down to three, two, one second, snapping the ball, controlling the football game. He'd like nothing better than run eight, 10, 12 running plays. Kevin Falk checks back into the game. He and Toomer in the backfield. Falk. Should have the first down near the Mississippi State 37-yard line. You, know, you look ahead to LSU's schedule. They've got Auburn at home, their home opener, next week. We touched on how important the win for Georgia last week was with Tennessee coming up next. After A&M, then on the road, you have to go home and play Auburn. That makes today's outcome, if it holds, very important. And uh, the schedule is as difficult as any you'll find for an SEC team, particularly non-conference. Please call the MSU Police Department. Greg Elkins, Duke Freeland, MSU Police Department. Falk, stop behind the line. That's Walt Harris again coming up to make the grab. The senior out of LaGrange, Georgia, consensus all-SEC cornerback. Now the free safety. Well, you know, you look, you look at what Howard had last year in interceptions. 17 interceptions through two games, none. That's, that's a real commitment because last year he evidently forced that ball in. He tried to put through it places where it shouldn't have been. This year, he's more confident. He's got nothing to lose after last year. Let me tell you, that was a disaster for him. It was almost a nightmare. Second and 14. Quick hitch to Shedrick Wilson. Dropped immediately at the 36 by Bernard Ewell. Now this is a guy that obviously could opt for either sport once he's done in Tigerland. Tremendous pitcher, played at the A level in the Braves organization. And as I mentioned, his uh, decision to stay at LSU and not play during the offseason some baseball did not make the Braves brass happy. Played in Macon in Class A ball in 94 and chose not to play, but uh, you may be hearing from him again in a baseball uniform. Third and eight. The cutback by Cleveland, and he runs right into Larry Williams again. And it'll be fourth down. Tim, I read a story, I think, about DiNardo, where he made the decision. You talk about from, uh, from Brooklyn to Baton Rouge. I think he was watching the game on television. Wasn't he with a sophomore year or something? And he said, uh, actually, it was his story. freshman year. You'll recall many years ago, Notre Dame and LSU had uh, an opportunity to play at Notre Dame and had a return visit. And we'll discuss that when we come back after this timeout. The Mediterranean ruins that can be found on the campus of Mississippi State. So far, the Fighting Tigers of LSU in a position to leave Mississippi State's defense in a state of ruins. A tremendous second half. And they're going to try a field goal now. Uh, 52 yards. Lafleur, a knuckleball that goes through. Low trajectory. 
but effective. Boy, that thing barely cleared the line. When you kick from 50 yards or more, you have to have a low trajectory. That thing barely cleared the line. I thought it got tipped for yeah. a second. It'll officially be 51 yards, and why Andre LaFleur loves kicking at Scott Field, doesn't he? Oh, boy, does he ever. Watch this ball. It doesn't come up very high. It's got to get a lot of leg in it. As that ball came across the line of scrimmage, I almost thought I heard a tip. <laughs> but it's good. You know, you were talking about you were talking about uh, this program and Joe Dean, uh, for so long the spokesperson for SEC basketball for many years working with John Ferguson, and there's the commissioner Roy Kramer of the SEC. I think the rest of this league would love to see Joe Dean's football program get back to the glory days. It would only serve to help this league to have Saturday nights in Tiger Stadium special again. Again, Richie gets all of it. Eric Moles gets the touchback. Going back to that story of Jerry DiNardo, he knew about the magic. The last year that freshmen could not compete at the Division I level was 1971, which happened to be his freshman year. And that was a return engagement in a home-and-home -home series between Notre Dame and LSU. The Tigers had lost at Notre Dame Stadium in 70, and he watched on national TV. LSU went 28 to 8, a showcase game for Andy Hamilton and Burt Jones. And he said at that time he knew that LSU had a chance at having magic for a long time. First and 10, Mississippi State. Lofted to Robert Isaac, who is popped at the 27 yard line. Walker and Linton coming over. And Tim, it makes a lot more sense, too, to figure out how you get from Brooklyn to Baton Rouge. <laughs> Hurry up offense, no huddle now. Seven and a half minutes left. 34-10 Tigers. Isaac again, quickly ushered out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Let's go back down to Bob Kessler. You mentioned the magic and changing things at LSU. Of course, the white jerseys now. Jerry DiNardo fought hot so that the LSU Tigers would be able to wear the white jerseys at home. He got, In fact, he got the NCAA rule changed because of that. Also, there's a rumor floating about that the LSU Tigers, one of these days, might show up in purple pants and white jerseys. Coach DiNardo would neither confirm nor deny that rumor, but it might happen. Well, that'll get the alumni talking in the Bayou State. That's a tip pass. Incomplete. Robert Desitel, the middle linebacker, got his big mid up there, number 46 in white, to tip it. You know, another interesting change is the flag. That's the Louisiana flag on the back of the helmet. Virtually a seal and the flag, the Pelican State, worn proudly by this uh, school that truly is the State University. A number of uh, other Division I schools in the state of Louisiana, but none quite like LSU. In Mississippi, you have both Ole Miss and Mississippi State. That pass is complete to Gerald Daniels up to the 47-yard line. Boy, and I'll tell you this, Tate is sharp right now. He's back in that shotgun formation. He doesn't have to run back and set up, but he's thrown three or four nice strikes right now. down. Brad Ainsworth, the left guard, appeared to have some premature movement, the junior out of Laurel, Mississippi. Now there's one trouble with that quick huddle, no huddle I should say, and that is the snap count always has to be exactly the same. Left guard moving. You don't get the chance to change the snap count, so your big linemen have got to listen carefully. Jackie Sherrill constantly taking notes. His game preparation and his organizational skills looked up to by many, particularly in big game situations. But he's had difficulty solving LSU throughout his career. That pass complete to Moles and now a marker down right in front of Jerry DiNardo and it will be a face mask. Those kinds of mental errors, I'm sure Jerry DiNardo will take oh. home even with a victory. Yeah, he'll, he'll be happy if he gets to go home with a victory, but I promise you on Monday they will certainly talk about all the penalties. They have had a rash of penalties. 
personal foul, twisting the face mask, defensive team, 15 yards, automatic first down. This is the flagrant one where they twisted. You notice how he put the emphasis on twisted the face mask. It's not just a hand across the face mask. They used the face mask to bring him down. See if we can see it on the tail end right there. See the face mask? Oh, boy, he did use it to pull him down. And he really didn't get him down. You're going to get the mask, get him down. Take over the middle to Isaac. About three yards shy of the first down. Pat Rogers made the tackle, the right side linebacker for LSU. Clock continuing to run. I am really impressed. The three yard line. I'm really impressed with Tate's leadership in the shotgun. No huddle, calling the play out now, calling the snap count, and he's really let him down the field well. Tate airmails one. Northern was putting the pressure on, and Derek just decided to unload. Chris Jones was the closest receiver to it. Third down and four coming up. Getting a lot of pressure from that right side because this is Gabe Northern time. You know, they just take off. We talked about the pressure on the quarterback. Northern and Gilliard coming from the outside. That's tough pressure. That's when you got to step up in the pocket and believe that your offensive tackles are going to take them wide. Keeper McGee back into the game. Out of the shotgun. Well, you can hear the Tigers yelling, draw, draw, draw. And James Gilliard, number seven, right there, along with Greg Hill, one of the triumvirate from Mansfield. Freshman, number 25, helping out. 5.48 remaining with a timeout. And the Tigers leading 34 to 10 in Starkville. Today's Lee Apparel SEC Game of the Week was brought to you by Lee Apparel. With new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. First SEC games for both teams. And Mississippi State's offense has cooled off considerably since Eric Moles caught that touchdown on the opening play of the game. There's Moles on the quick slant. And I am really frankly surprised Denard Walker made the tackle that they could not find him on just such a pass in the second half. I know. You know, we talked about one of the ones in the rewinds. We said that they had to find a way to cover mold. They took him out of the ball game. 120 yards in the first half. He had six yards up until that catch. One catch in the second half. On first down, incomplete. That is an example of the kind of pass we've seen from time to time from Derek when in fact he doesn't need to rush it, rushing it. Yeah. He hadn't wait he didn't wait for molds to come clear on that slam pattern back across the middle. Very successful performance against Memphis, but you step up in class when you come back in your own backyard in the SEC. Second and ten. dropped and he's had a number of those you know it's easy to be critical of the quarterback but how many drops that one by Daniels Jones has had his fair share as well and you know the tough thing for a quarterback he's got to walk back in that huddle he's just had a pass dropped and he can't say anything to him he just says okay let's go guys we got you got to keep your cool at all times when you're on top of the mountain you got to keep it under control when you're in the bottom of the valley you got to keep it elevated 17 of 34 I mean it looks good in the box score but on the scoreboard, he's down by 24. On third and 10, Moles. That quick look in, good for five yards, but it's fourth down, and they're in four-down territory. Down by 24. A young, unhappy camper at this point. 
There will be better days. Timeout taken. Yeah, you have to take a timeout on that fourth down and about five yards to go. you got to uh, burn one of those timeouts. Five minutes and nine seconds remaining. Now, Jerry DiNardo, I think, has done a tremendous job in the maturation process as a head coach. There were a few media types in Nashville that had difficulty with DiNardo, and, uh, and he also had his fair share of problems in dealing with them. And that's an area of the head coaching role that he has really worked on in coming over to Baton Rouge. Our players of the game, sponsored by Miller Lite, Kevin Falk, 171 yards, two touchdowns, very similar to the day Robert Edwards had, the junior of Georgia. And Mississippi State also represented as part of our Players of the Game Award Scholarship Program, Jefferson Pilot Sports will donate $2,000 to the SEC to be distributed among its member institutions. Eric Moles representing Mississippi State. Incomplete. Pressure again. And Twilly did a nice job in coverage, but we've got a marker down. You know, you talk about, uh, I remember early when we were doing the layups and getting ready for the game, you said, I wonder if he would ever put Kevin Falk at uh, quarterback because of the great high school career. I think he answered today, he's going to stay at running back. <laughs> in the recruiting process, though, there will be much concern for DiNardo. Sure. sure. We got defensive linemen line lined line up in the neutral zone, half the distance. It'll still be fourth down. Yeah, I mean, that has happened over and over again oh, for DiNardo's club yeah. today. See, I think it's Gabe Norman, number 88. He's got a stunt. It's, a it's an end stunt where the end comes in, the tackle comes back outside. You can't line up. Going, ba zone. going back to Jerry DiNardo, though, once he loses Jamie Howard, he has to find another quarterback that can get the ball to those skilled positions. Fourth and one. McGee, touchdown! Thirty-four-sixteen, with just under five minutes to play. if the decision is to go for two in this situation. You go for two, that would give you 18 points, then you're, what, 16 down. Two more eights. Well, that's right. It would make it a two-possession game if you're able to get the two-point conversions. Mississippi State will attempt a two-point conversion. I formation behind Tate. Reverse, Shaston Coleman. Credit Gilliard for spreading that play out and enabling Rodgers and Twilly to come up and make the tackle. Well, that changes the complexion because now, now you have to score three possessions. This is just, again, strength football. Big man on big man. Lead the back up through there. Just give him the ball. Put your head down and try to find the yards. Look for that seam. Hold on to the football and blast into the end zone. 34-16. Mississippi State will no doubt... Look to claim an onside kick and get the ball back. Those are some happy Tigers, and they've had some success against Mississippi State, even in the lean years. But you agree with what I'm saying with respect to Jerry DiNardo. Yes, very as much a, so. As very a much former so. offensive coach, his first head job at Vanderbilt. And I think that's a, a strong concern for him and his future, dealing with what it takes to be a Division I head coach. Well, I think it was really interesting yesterday in the talk with him, how you how he opened up to you. He was much more open yesterday and with the media than what he has been in the past. Mississippi State schedule you saw there, and it doesn't get any easier for them. All three of their really big opponents on that schedule are on the road for Jackie Sherrill. Now watch this onside kick. Bounce it and get the high bounce, but they catch it before it. Eric Smith, a part of the Good Hands crew, bringing it in for LSU. And they'll take over at Mississippi State's 46-yard line. 
is me going to the ground at the 40. First down, Tigers. Expectation levels. Anytime you're ahead of schedule, and Cheryl is, in his first four seasons, three trips to bowl games. He's dealing with those today. Melvin Hill is coming at quarterback, replacing Jamie Howard, the sophomore out of Mansfield. Kendall Cleveland for a couple of yards. He was a catalyst in that second half drive that led to the touchdown. His uh, scamper gave the Tigers really, I think, a lead that they felt they'd never give up. You know, one of the things that was amazing to me in, in our workups is uh, all the success Jackie Sherrill has had here. We talked about his 15, 15, and 1 in the last 31 games. But against LSU, as down as LSU's records have been, they've always given him trouble. And he had great teams at Texas A&M. Uh, in the mid-80s that won Southwest Conference titles and he couldn't knock off the Tigers. Melvin Hill, of course, the brother of both Chris Hill and the freshman safety Greg Hill. Handing off to Cleveland again and Kendall is knocked down by Henry Ellis. Number 45, the linebacker. Well, I don't think you're going to see Melvin Hill's arm. I think it's just going to be run, 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 run. And I'm sure on the sideline they told him, said, look up at that game clock. Take as much time as you can off of it. Let it tick on down. Third down and four. You can't overlook the job done by the tight ends by committee today. Savoie, Chris Hill particularly, and Champagne. Yeah, Champagne, a starting, uh, I mean, a backup deep offensive tackle comes in with number 86 on him today. <laughs> Cleveland. Gets down before he reaches the out-of-bounds marker. And the clock continues to run, and it will be fourth down coming up. That's one tough fella right there. Got shook up a little bit early, came back in. He's one of those freshmen. You know, unlike Kevin Falk, Cleveland is somewhat effortless in his approach. He's a smooth back when in the open field. But when he's running inside, he bowls right over. Yeah, him. he does. He puts his head down. He likes that contact. And he's and I'll tell you another thing, too. He controls the football well with the arms. When he sees he's going to be in trouble inside, wraps that football up. There will be a, a number of options for Donardo to explore with uh, the people that he has in that backfield and at the wide receiver spots. Timeout coming up. LSU will punt it away. And let's go down to Bob Kessling, Bob. One young man disappointed he didn't get to play today, Clay Mack of Mississippi State, one of their best defensive backs, out with a hamstring. What is the injury situation, and when could you be back, Clay? Uh, right now, speculation is that I'll be back next week sometime. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get in maybe Wednesday or Thursday. You know, I'm just going to try to hold off as long as possible. i got to have a good showing at home. I'm from Texas, so i got to go home and play another one. Let's pick up the punt. Just hold on just a second, Clay. Kessler will get it off at midfield. Low snap, and it's blocked. Picked up by Northern. And the marker down, of course. It was fourth down. The block was by Bernard Yule. And this was a problem last week for LSU. The low snap leading to problems for special teams. Now all of a sudden they picked up the flag and waved it off. So the flag, there will not be a flag. I think they were marking the spot where Northern had picked it up. See, did the ball go past the line yeah. of scrimmage? It did. Well, first down. Yep. There's no flag on the play. That's right. And they were using the flag. Actually, the flag was down the spot where Northern had picked the ball up. And it did go beyond the line of scrimmage. So it is a first down. They picked it up and they're allowed to advance it. Well, last week they had uh, some very tough breaks in the kicking game. And today they get a good one. Yeah. New running back in the game for LSU. Derek Beavers at the tailback, sophomore from Karen Crow, Louisiana. He's joined by Robert Toomer. On first and ten, it's Beavers. Let's go back down to Bob, who was uh, 
chatting with Clay Mack prior to the uh, situation we had on that punt, Bob. Yeah, Clay, I know this is a very disappointing game for the Mississippi State team. How do you regroup and look ahead now? Well, basically, uh, come, come Monday, we just won't have to find a character on our team. Uh, right now, uh, I'm quite sure everyone disappointed as well as, my, as, well as myself. Uh, just going to have to come back and regroup. You know, the SEC is a tough conference, but, uh, hey, you know, we, we got to control our own destiny. We just got to bounce back from this. One. You guys are all banged up, too, you included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's something that, that we're constantly fighting. But, hey, you know, if, you, if, if we want to compete in the SEC, you know, we got to overcome things. Like that. Get healthy, you're back in the next one. Okay, for sure. Clay Mack of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Our thanks to Clay for stopping by. Beavers carries again, and Conley Harris makes the stop. The freshman inside linebacker in for Dwayne Curry. A lot of people getting some playing time now. You see Champagne's changed back to number 70. <laughs> I want to play offensive tackle now, Coach. He's a junior transfer out of uh, Covington, Louisiana. We're down at three. There's Falk and a very happy Jamie Howard. All smiles on the LSU sidelines. Beavers again, not much room. Eric Daniel, the free safety, number 29, comes up to make the tackle. A very impressive opening SEC win for Jerry DiNardo. Oh yeah, there were some penalties, a number of mistakes, but boy, to do the Tigers have something to cheer about. This was an offensive showcase for Falk and a confidence builder for a veteran quarterback who could make a lot of noise the rest of the year, Jamie Howard. Absolutely. They're not going into any game sneaking up on people now. They've made believers out of people today. Terry Bowden's Auburn Tigers, a team that has been so dominant in the last two years, will get a taste of a different breed of cat in Tiger Stadium than the ones they had on the plains of Auburn a year ago. Ain't no, ain't no pussy cats up there now, buddy. <laughs> now they played smash mouth football. They played tough up front. That was a real, it was really a physical game on the lines of scrimmage. Well, Dave, we said, which offensive line could control the other team's defensive front? The answer came quickly. LSU's offensive line was up to the test. Jackie's career record coming into this game. You can now add a loss to that. He'll be one in seven in his career against LSU. But uh, don't fret, old Jackie will be armed and dangerous next week. I don't think I'd like to play him next week. Tate with one last opportunity and flag. flag comes down. He may have taken too long. Yeah, he did. Flag on the ground. Play of game. You hear that chant? Something they haven't heard yeah. late in games in the SEC for some time. They're all down in the end zone, and you can sure tell them that purple sticks out. Uh -huh. That pretty much sums it up. Gilliard and Northern. Rushing from the outside, more successful than State rushing from the inside. Boy, several plays come to mind. You think about that penalty, when they when they had that penalty down there, they were going to punt. The face mask penalty was another big one. They kept drives alive, and LSU capitalized on those drives and went down and scored. Those were huge plays against Mississippi State. Let's go down to Bob Gessling with Jerry DiNardo. A very happy Jerry DiNardo. Congratulations for your first win at LSU. Thanks, Bob. I thought the uh, kids showed a lot of character second half. Obviously, we got some things to work on. I felt a week ago we could have a good team, and I feel the same way now. Your defense was dominating after that first play. Yeah, we had, until the end, we didn't give up a touchdown other than that first play. So we got a lot of work to do, but it's a lot more fun working on the things you have to work on after a win than a loss. How 
important is it to have J J uh, Jamie Howard and his leadership and experience with you? Oh, it's, he's, it's been immeasurable. I think he's been terrific. I think the job that uh, Morris Watts has done with Jamie has been great. I think Jamie's been terrific. And your running backs. They're getting there. We have to the ball. Thanks, Jerry Donardo. <laughs> a very happy Coach Jerry Donardo. And one of the guys we talked about, Kevin Falk, who had a terrific day of 171 yards on the ground. Kevin, congratulations on the thank win. You, thank you. Talk about your offensive line. I guess any good running back wants to talk about them a little bit. Well, offensive line brought great to the evening. We went over in practice and stuff. We, what we really wanted to do was come out and score our first drive, and that's what we did. I'm curious, after that first long touchdown by Moulds, what did you guys talk about on the sideline? Told ourselves not to get down, you know. We had to keep ourselves up because that was the first play of the game. We had four more quarters. What about the adjustment to college football? Has it been a tough one for you? No, nah, it's never really been that tough, you know. Just had to been following my blocks and my. That's about it. You just want to play football, don't yes, you? Yes, sir. Congratulations today, Kevin. Thank you. Kevin Falk, a big day for the LSU Tigers in this victory. You know, it was uh, said, Bob, by no less than Jerry DiNardo that he may have as much talent at the skilled positions that he's ever had since his 1990 national championship team at Colorado. That's how confident, Dave, he is in the ensemble of talent that he has. Yeah, he's made some great adjustments. His kids are responding to him well, and it's going to be an interesting year for LSU football. Tigers win at 34-16 in Starkville, and we'll be back after this word from your local SEC station. LSU, an impressive 34-16 win on the road in the Southeastern Conference against the Mississippi State Bulldogs, a team expecting to move beyond the top 25 and maybe even into the top 10 as Jackie Sherrill moves into his fifth year. You find out a great deal early on in key games, and a, a game like this can be a tilt game that means added victories the rest of the year and a chance for a bowl game for LSU, something they dearly want in Jerry DiNardo's first year. Oh, and I'll tell you this, the, inter the interesting thing has got to be the stats, the change in the stats from the first half to the second half. They found a way to stop Moles. He didn't have those long yards uh, that he had. He had 120 yards in receiving in the first half. They, they came out and they established a little bit of a ground game, but man, oh man, LSU just drove the football and scored on them. Let's take a look at the final stats in this afternoon's game and the rushing yards there in a big way. And look how few Mississippi State could muster. We knew Derek Tate would have to throw it. He had to, to endure a number of drop passes today, and I think uh, he was on his heels a bit, particularly in the second half when he couldn't find Moles. And LSU took him away, even with the loss of Torrey James. Well, two things jump out, as you said, Tim. The rushing yards for Mississippi State, 22. That's incredible. Then you look, turnovers jump out at you at LSU, but look at the penalties. Yeah. That's what Jerry DiNardo was saying. We're going to go back. We're going to have to work on those things, but at least we work on them on a positive note. Yeah, but to overcome... 15 penalties for 111 yards and win going away. Yeah, they did. Uh, I mean, they that, controlled the football game. That's scary. That's scary for future opponents. And Terry Bowden is the most recent future opponent <laughs> on the Tigers' schedule. Well, I think one of the things you have to credit LSU, they had they had several key injuries, and they overcame them. They lose LaFleur. I mean, that's a big injury, and they come back from it. You're listening to a chant of a proud tradition reborn, perhaps just perhaps in Starkville this afternoon. Back to wrap it up on the Lee SEC Game of the Week after this. Our final score this afternoon on Jefferson Pilot Sports' Lee SEC Game of the Week. The Fighting Tigers of LSU 34, Mississippi State 16. Both teams now 1-1. One one. LSU 1-0 one in conference play. Mississippi State 0-1 in league play. Don't forget, coming up next week, Arkansas coming off the heels of a critical tilt game for them against South Carolina this weekend. On the road against Alabama. The Crimson Tide are waiting. Gene Stallings' club with problems off the field, having to deal with them directly on the field. And, of course, they were given a tough tussle from Vanderbilt just last week. Jerry DiNardo's old club in Nashville made it awfully difficult for him. That'll be a very interesting game for us next week, particularly when you consider that Alabama has chosen, at least at this point, not to deal with the players, at least, yeah. with the probation. Yeah, and you know what it's like going into Tuscaloosa. That's no easy place to go in and try to get away with a victory. We're told now Arkansas in the second half 
leading 14-7 over South Carolina. Mississippi State in its centennial season, hoping to get off to a good start in the league, unable to do so in this series that dates back longer than any other within the confines of the Southeastern Conference. Enjoyed it today. I think we learned a great deal about uh, the youth movement, particularly uh, Kevin Falk. Last week it was Robert Edwards. This week it's Kevin Falk. Yeah, I think each, each week we're going to showcase another star. These are the people that help bring you this telecast. Our executive producer, Jimmy Rayburn, in the truck. Rob Reichley and Smitty, Tom Smith, our director. Eric Moles got Mississippi State started. Oh, but it was not a sign of things to come. The Fighting Tigers of LSU with their speed merchant got an answer. They're Eddie the K. Eddie Kennison on the receiving end of this pass from Jamie Howard was, in fact, a sign of what was to be the rest of this day in the Golden Triangle of the Magnolia State. LSU wins it over Mississippi State by a final score of 34 to 16. For Dave Rowe and our entire Jefferson Pilot sports crew, this is Tim Brando saying so long. Jefferson Pilot sports production staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fence. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. A proud tradition reborn. LSU thinks so. So long from Starkville.